with teeth. Maybe in the last minute of your life you want to be something more than a goddamn savage! hunts he rises he roams he appears he whispers in your ear he disappears one of god's own prototypes a high-powered mutant of some kind never even considered for mass production too weird to live too rare to die you are listening to the throat of a mortal coil patal revolution is my name this video contains copywritten content, however, under the Fair Use Act, Section 504C2, Title 17 of the United States Code, this content is presented for the purposes of education entertainment through the use of parody, satire, critique, analysis, and or social commentary by means of subjective opinion. Viewer discretion is advised. Which means, put your kids to bed. You're going to hear some fuck words. We have a good show for you tonight, stretching through time and space. I want to say hail to the chat right off the bat. We got RR, our faithful soldier, given the savage salute. Hail, hail, sir. Welcome. Let's have it out. With me is the standard bearer of doesn't give a fuck. Aware of distraction and whose wrists are true to aim, guided by the touch of Artemis. The man whose dick can only upset your own energy, the one and the only author, Stephen fucking Walton. What you got, son? Hail the ancient gods. Hail the elders and those that are dead but dreaming. What's going on, bro? Uh, this is basically late night with David Letterman, but leaden with the knowledge of spirit. How you doing, sir? I'm doing okay. Uh, yeah, I'm drinking coffee. I will uh, move it up to Faka here at some point, but I'm waking hey. up now. There we go, man. It's uh, left high, whatever it is you are imbibing. Oh. That is the savage salute. Hell. Yes, sir. Well, it's it's been a little while, man. Um, I've had the flu the past couple weeks, so my throat might be a little bit froggy. But uh, I think I've put together a pretty good show for you guys tonight. Yeah, you need something for that throat. You know, right? You need something to help solve your throat. <laughs> right, something salty to wash it down. <laughs> I'm just checking. I'm looking out for a brother. <laughs> Hell, sir. Hell, sir. Um, one thing I meant to do. Um, so I recently moved uh, my locale. I'm I'm a little bit further south than Seattle. I don't want to give away the spot exactly, but I did visit like a really good crystal shop. Um, and it's called a spirit song. It's out in Auburn, Washington. I actually picked up a, a little lapis lazuli crystal skull from there. Oh, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, dude. I don't see a lot of um, like worth it crystal shops out there or metaphysics shops you know most of them have the same kind of accoutrements 
Um, but there was this nice lady from Russia that uh, wasn't bad looking either. Uh, but, you know, independent business owner. She has her own like website and all that shit. So you guys can go and check it out. Um, but she uh, one of the things that impressed me, she had like two towers of uh, ancient Egyptian deities. The only thing that was mm. missing. I know that's that's that should get you nice and hard, right? So the only thing that was missing from that pantheon was a uh, founder Ta, and I I asked about that, and she's like, you know, I should have them out here, and she went out and looked for like ten minutes, and she's like, oh, I guess I don't have them, but everybody else was there, including Toth, including Horus and Isis, and all those good people, you know. I have so, a uh, pussy now. You, I've got a pussy since we've been gone, and my pussy's. <laughs> My pussy's name is Bissette, but my pussy's a pussy because she uh, won't let me. Yeah, yeah, my 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 son is like the animal whisperer. My youngest, like all the animals, love him. And I don't, and, but, animal affinity is a powerful skill, man. No, he's got that ability. Yeah, it's like Danny, my my oldest. He's like, you know, I don't understand why the cat doesn't want to talk to me. I said, now you got to understand, Nathan. He's got that. He's like an animal whisperer. But the the, the he, he the pussy will run to him. The pussy runs from me. I don't get it. Like what? What is it about Walton the pussy runs from? But anyway, yeah. uh, there was a dog over here last night, and it was like, thank God, you know, like my uh, my oldest um, baby mama. It's like say, you know, baby mama's dog, and I was like so happy. I was like a real animal. Look, it's got meat. It's like a pit bull mix, so it's like real fucking. You know what I mean? It's like it, yeah. it's mas- It's a masculine dog. Oh yeah, you know, just, yeah. You know, and I was just so happy of wrestling with this dog because the cockatiel. Just the, the my cock, the, the, this cock is so mm-hmm. loud. It, it, more, immortal. Yeah, I can't stand it. I'm glad. I wish I had woken up early enough to set That's up my studio. Because uh, like this cock is going to get loud at some point. And I'm sorry. Uh, it's all good, man. When it uh when it starts to scream, we'll just kind of smack it down once again. So uh, speaking of the cold and flu season, I wanted to take an opportunity to, uh, you know, publicly say to you, I've dragged down the quality of the show. And that was never my intention. I've been going through some shit and that kind of leads me into our first topic. I don't want to dwell on that aspect of it too much, but the first topic is, is sick psychics. And that's this phenomenon that, um, we're able to give advice to every fucking buddy, but we can't take our own advice. And Oh my God, isn't that the truth? when it comes down to it, like, uh, life has to smack us hard with like the backhand twice across, you know, time and space up to, and including the point where we physically manifest illness, which is, a, uh, you know, that, that tends to happen to me maybe once or twice in, in the grand scheme of the year, um, to a debilitating point. But if you ever notice yourself developing, like, you know, the sniffles or, cold and flu or something like that um respiratory infections in particular um happens when your uh process of communication is frustrated and uh for me aside from taking accountability um it's hard for me to like put together a show and just trust the fucking universe to even if i don't have a topic to just let the fucking discourse run because I should know better by now. Stephen and I can talk about anything and make it interesting and fascinating. Like even when we're just having like personal conversations, I'm like, man, or it could devolve should... into dicks, or it could devolve into dicks. But either way, I'm just like, man, we should be live right now. You know, why aren't we live right now? And I find myself like, you know, gearing up and amping up to Saturday, and then like Saturday fucking happens, and then I start feeling bad, and I, you know, uh, pull out. Or I pull in like a very and poor you performance. Never, and you never pull out a mortal quill. Real men do not pull out. Okay? That's right. That's you stay right. in there and you fuck it until it's done. Uh, it, and it also depends on what, what when you talk about manifestation of illnesses due to uh, energetic imbalance, also the part of your body, you you brought that up briefly, the yeah. parts of your body, that also means something too. Like if it's in, if it's in your hip region, uh, it usually has to do with relationships or something that's untoward in the relationships. If you have leg cramps, it's because you're not motivated, you're not moving, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Um, the, those go. things, yeah, the, they do physically, you get signs physically, 
because your spirit's talking to you through your body and the temple of your mind. Yep. For me, mostly, you know, what has been getting. I, I'm t- I hope I hope my fucking haters aren't watching. This is there because li- this is the thing for me lately. It, uh, well, no, not just lately, but it, dreams are what get me because I'm very uh, cerebral and spiritual. So the communication that I have with my guardian uh, spirits and my ancestors all manifest their dreams. I have been good for weeks now, but my spirits hate me for letting Narc X come back in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that so dreams affect me, Absolutely. you know? You know, like the last time we streamed, I'm so good, Coil. The last time we streamed, you brought her up. I don't know if you remember, but you and I, it didn't uh, even af- it didn't even affect me. Like it was just like I don't care. It was like deadpan. Like I don't care because I really don't. Um, but it, but the dreams. I was just saying that to my youngest. I was like, "What the fuck?" I was like, I, "Now normally those things would bring put me in a bad mood, but the reason I think I'm having them is because my guardians are like, are you done yet?'" Are you are you done yet? Yeah, <laughs> you I, do done? Re- I do remember that. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. But but that's what's happening. Your 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 guardians, your spirits, your your uh, ancestors, protectors. You know, however it is that you you view the spirits around you that help to guide you um, while you're in this plane. Uh, there, they'll they'll f with you. They'll abandon you. They'll give you bad dreams. Um, uh, they'll leave you if you're not doing your purpose. They'll allow. They'll, they'll allow illnesses, like you said, like to manifest because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Sure. And um, that's how yeah. energetically those things manifest themselves into the material plane. And it's an act of free will. So even if they wanted to mm-hmm. intervene, you know, you, you called that into yourself. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, their job is to guide. It's the, you know what I mean? It's not to, to, it's not to, to. There's the cock. Right. Yes, yeah, that's my cock. And not to put you in a certain direction, right? Free will above uh, all where demons, whereas demonic forces and dark forces will, will intervene and will mess with you, you know, and will do things or put up obstacles in your path or try to trick you into making bad decisions or tempt you, you know, into if like, if you're like, if you're suicidal, they will tempt you into, into doing that. If you are murderous, they will tempt you. You know, if you're feeling very angry and it's like, could, could tip into a murderous thought, they will tempt you. So it, it's, uh, but going back, any issue in your life that is severe, that is bothering you, or you are not moving in a direction that your angels have guided you to will manifest itself into sickness and illness. Uh, but eventually they do give up. Like, if you're just hard-headed and you're not doing what you're supposed to do, like, they will abandon you. Sure. You know, and let you fall. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Well, we also have that thing, and and there's two points that you raised that were interesting to me, is um, number one, disturbances that manifest as as physical illnesses first manifest as uh, aberrations in your energy field. And that can be, that can only be put there by an act of conscious will. Now, whether you decide to consciously throw that there as a result of an interaction with another being, that's up to you. Uh, and I forget what the second point was, so just run with that. So beware with beware also, especially if you're dealing with a lot of um, uh, uh, spirits around you. Those, those dark spots you see in the corner of your of your eyes. Like I'm right, you know, those that those mean something. Um especially if you're not in a space that's already possessed or not possessed, but already heavily trafficked in the spirit realm. Like I'm I'm in a place right now, it's like a friggin' ghost highway. It's crazy the amount of spirits that are in this house. Um so I see them all the time, but you will be able to tell the difference between uh an entity that is kind of like uh, uh, brushing across this plane, something that is there to give you a sign, something that is dark. Coil, I literally, I've literally seen, especially like last year, when I started effing with uh, those demons. <laughs> I started out with like on this plane, like uh, I started. Okay, okay, I'm gonna, I got, I got to find a way to circumvent this. I <laughs> began, I began interacting with a group of people, or a pair, or a cluster of people who are do deal with demonic forces because 
of the way that they treat others, their selfish nature and destructive nature. And when I began talking to them again or being involved in that energy again, I was literally sitting out back at my friend's house and in the adjacent yard. The only way that I can describe it was like um, it was a dark form. It looked like an assassin. It looked like like, like a shinobi was was like looking or peering around the corner of a garage at me, you know? um yeah like that's it was like i'm ready bitch like the demons are ready to play um you can tell the difference between different types of entity uh so do, like just pay attention uh, and sometimes it's like sometimes they're just they're just ghosts something like in those black spots those shadows you see in the corner of your eyes they're just ghosts it's nothing more they're, they're just there um and you do eventually when you become attuned to it you feel the difference all of those things though if you're dealing with a darker force can cause illness. They absolutely right. can cause physical illness. They can attack you in that way. People don't understand. I, you know, it's like a, it's a lost understanding and it's a shame. Mm -hmm. And it's due to these freaking, a lot of it's due to the, to the, the Abraham religions. Um, sure. They lost this connectional understanding that the stitching between spirit and physical form is very crucial. It's, it's, it's very, very in tune with one another, mind, body, and spirit, yeah. all three of these things. Well, and you and mentioned the Abrahamic religions, and let us not forget that uh, Enlil Yahua forbade us from hell. going into that psychic kind of like uh, metaphysical realm. He said, don't even bother with that shit. That shit's evil. Uh, really really promoting the disconnect between the spirit and the the fucking animal absolutely you know, even sending his his own people out in the desert to just get murdered and fucked with so i was very happy early in to meet um a christian mystic who used to youtube by the name of final death star oh yeah and hell final death star hell final yeah, enter the he changed his name to enter the unfamiliar guys great channel please go check that out a lot of great information there and he is a yeah he is a christian mystic and the, so in his translation of spirituality which to me is way above your everyday going to church every week automaton um his understanding was just what you said because from the teachings of his god you don't go into the psychic realm. You don't go into the spirit realm. Angels handle that. You don't. You don't touch that. Now, that's not where I come from. That's not how my <laughs> understanding of it. But it, it, there is a, and you're, you're right. I think that's promotion of the separating disconnect between spirit, mind, and body. But well, but it's also ETs pretending to be God. Like, like, yeah, any number of things. Well, I mean, yeah. that's your realm. That's your. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway, but, yeah, well, I just, I just didn't want to speak on something from you. That's your experiences. I, good, I don't, bro. I don't have much there. But when it comes to spirit realm, when it comes to like multi-dimensional spirit realm, uh, it is also in my mind a way of uh, of demonic or dark forces separating us, or selfish mm. forces separating us from yeah, my spirit versus service right. to others yes. but even right but even then within his belief system within his way of thinking like he understood that there was a higher self and and actually a connection cool. to spirituality within his own thinking cool. so it, it, i look at it as clerical when i look at like pat when i look at imams pastors priests rabbi i look at them as clerical clerical in the way that their power, the way that they connect to source is by giving themselves over to source in through their, their holy writings and teachings, which can lead to spiritual enlightenment. Absolutely. It can. But, it just interposes an intermediary. Yes. You know, and that's not to detract from the man's path. I, I love Final Death Star. I miss him. I wish he could fucking join us at some point. Oh, dude. I, I, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I've gone to him. I've gone to Bear 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 Nerd Fun. I've gone to Spork News Podcast. I've come to you. Yeah. I, there, there are people that I've come to for spiritual advice because of the different perspectives and the different paths that you're on. Because there's there's wisdom to be gained there. Um, and I, yeah, the thing, I, there was one time I, there was a woman. Our she's gone now. Too. 
Yeah, I miss him. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, can we say Nephilim and get a shot in the chat? Um, <laughs> <There you go. laughs> so, but they all, everyone's path has wisdom, especially when you're dealing with a spiritual person, regardless of what it is. The, yep. I've gone to him for demonic. I was fighting a demon. Um, of our friend of mine was fighting a demon and I was kind of out of my league and she's gone now. She's actually dead now. Um, yeah. and I think cause she lost her fight. She lost the demons manifested themselves in the way of addiction to heroin with her. Yeah. And since we're talking about the connection between the energetic and the physical, yep. those types of addictions, uh, uh are, are manifestations of dark energy that, uh, that are taken advantage of through trials that we go through, like through obstacles that are placed in our lives for us to overcome. When we succumb to those things, we literally invite demons to, to destroy our energy, like the way that Scott is, the way, you know, he's, he's, he's a drug addict, you know, and he yeah. hasn't done drugs in years, but you, like he, you talk to him about it. Like he will basically say the same thing through a Christian lens. It's, you know, he's battling his demons. Well, in the same way, man, I, I've been a terrible alcoholic and I, I sometimes wonder if, um, psychic and spiritual gifts sometimes come at with the caveat of, uh, well, you can have this powerful physical body that's capable of all these psychic and spiritual skills, but you have to deal with, you know, heroin addiction and you have to deal with alcoholism and you have mm -hmm. to deal with succubi and, you know, blah, 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 blah. and it's like, okay, I get it. As well, you say, yeah. as you're about to be born, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and well, and, and it's also like, well, I mean, you said suck you by. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you can't leave you, anybody out, you know. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Uh, I, um, oh my God. Oh God. You know, I, I got ghosted this weekend, dude. I'm so upset. I was so mad for like a minute. Okay. But here, I'm not, here's an example too. I don't even give a shit. I'll get personal. Fuck them. I've always been personal. Yeah. Uh, so like I'm talking to somebody all week, having a great conversations with this person all week, found out like the night, the night before Thursday, she was to come over this, she was supposed to come over this weekend on Thursday. We, we just kind of started talking, figured out that she knows all the players in my life. She, I've only known her for like 10, 11 years, but she knows X and she knows X's first baby daddy. And she, you know, cause her boyfriend was my boy since I was a teenager. Like we, we just started talking about all this stuff. And it's it's weird how just to, just a caveat just for a second into into what I do on Dragon Storm, but like it's funny again how you go through its intense life experience and you can look back at people in your history and realize they were toxic or they had a condition because now you are open, your eyes are open to seeing the behavioral patterns in a certain condition. And so we're having these really deep conversations and it's like, good night. All right. See you tomorrow. I'll talk to you tomorrow. All the, da, 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 and then ghosted. And I'm like, motherfuck. Mm. I, I did take that negative at first, but then I turned around and was like, nah, you just saved me. Like you just saved me a hassle. Yeah. Now I see, now I know who you are. Like, I'm not going to be upset about that. You take a negative into a positive. Yeah. And yeah. energetically, energetically, that's better for me. When you look at things like drinking, right? Well, if you look at the Abrahamic religions are borrowed from everything else before them. Oh, yeah. um, and one of the things that they, that they talk about, <clears throat> especially the, is the Islam, the, 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 the Muslims yeah. is not taking an alcohol. The Christians and Jews also believe this too, by the way, but <laughs> nobody practices what they preach, <laughs> but the, the, the Muslims are like, don't take alcohol because it, dilute your spirit and that is totally true alcohol yeah. and other substances but we'll, we'll say it alcohol, that dilutes your spiritual ability so that literally is like a demon in you or a demon around you testing you trying to get you to dilute your own spiritual power and i'd also like right. to say at the same time because i have been using it myself dude i've been drinking <laughs> i've been drinking a lot lately um i get that it. it i know you do <laughs> Uh, but it, it, it also numbs your psychic centers. It, you know, it does calm you. Like, I don't believe that someone should abstain from alcohol unless you need to, but it, uh, things like alcohol and different drugs, uh, like everything has its own place can give you a respite, especially if you're highly intuitive. Yes. Well, and it, and yeah. it becomes a crutch if you use it too much, you know, to the yeah. point where you'll fall asleep for days and days, you know, and you'll be fucking useless. And then, uh, 
you know, it turns into like, uh, it turns into this thing where, where you can't like, uh, be there for your friends or your family and you start making excuses. You don't, you know, do the shit you're right. supposed to do, you know, and, and that's true of any sort of substance abuse, but that one's personal to me. So I, I get it, dude. Um, but I think the best way out of, um, personal illness and, you know, even physical illness is to number one, take accountability for the fact that you put that in your own sphere in the first place and then learn to forgive yourself and then find a means of dealing with whatever frequency you didn't want to fucking deal with that you Uh you had to numb yourself. So, and that's been, uh, that's been the theme of the past couple weeks. Cause like I physically couldn't go to work and I'm just sitting there hurting and sweating and just like, you know, coughing and sneezing and my eyes are leaking and, and it's, it's not fun. It doesn't paint a pretty picture. Um, but it's also that thing. Like I, I have to forgive the fact that like, I don't have to live through a grand fucking realization to, to put on a good show. I have a very esteemed co-host and, if I need him to, which he has a couple times, I'm like, hey, Steven, just take the wheel this time, you know, uh, to the point where, you know, I, I think it might be interesting if we like trade the show back and forth through our channel and just, you know, one week you do it, one week I'll do it. And, you know, that way we both have a, a means of expressing ourselves and exposing ourselves to different audiences and that kind of thing. Exposing ourselves. Oh my God. Nick, dude, <laughs> yeah. you know what happened? <laughs> well, I'm not, we should listen. I expose myself all the time. That's where I'm at, where I'm at. I, if you're I, proud of them, you know, <laughs> you know what happened to me? Coil dude, I hit nine K and then something Scotty had always talked about, you know, like taking subs from you. Like I'd experienced that before, but only like 10 or 20. I literally had 400 fucking subscribers taken from me. Wow. Yeah, just out of nowhere. Right. And I was just like, all right, what did I do wrong? Like what, what did I do wrong in the universe that I deserve this? I don't know. I'm taking a break. I'm taking a break from the narc abuse stuff because I need to. So. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I gotta take a sabbatical now and again. I mirrored the living shit of these people. Uh, and it was because I was getting death threats. And uh, when I get death threats, I wave my dick at motherfuckers. Like, really? You're gonna threaten my life, you coward? All right, now I'm gonna wave yeah. my dick at you. Now I'm gonna put your face all over the internet. Now I'm gonna talk about how gay and cowardly and dumb fuck you are all over the internet. And so I've been throwing out a lot of, like, uh, you know, <laughs> A lot of dragon juju out there. Uh, And um, I'm glad to say that everyone shut the fuck up. (laughs) Well, that's good. I mean, we we talked amongst ourselves about um, putting a punctuation mark on that whole, like, narc thing. And you did put out a pretty good video that I think, like, summarized everything. And sometimes the best way to uh, combat that is just to fucking let it hang its own ass out, you know? Um, before we yeah. move on to the next topic, I want to say hail to the chat. Of course, we have the mighty RR, uh, hanging his pickle out. And then we got, uh, never say never zero one zero says greetings from the Netherlands. Hell. This is, this is awesome. Uh, I always knew that there was an international audience for this sort of thing, but, uh, this is the first time I've heard somebody like speak up and like own their homeland. Um, so hail to the Netherlands. That's a freaking sure. Viking right there, Coyle. There you go. Well, we all are, man. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was watching this other YouTube channel where this, uh, dude, he, he runs around and he does like food challenges. Cause you know, when I'm poor and I can't eat, I like to watch food porn. And this guy went to uh, Norway and he's from, he's from like uh, Britain. He's from like Leeds. And he's like, man, this, this country is beautiful and it feels like majestic and energetic. And I was like, well, no fucking wonder because the Normans overran your fucking country. Like, you know, a thousand years ago or whatever. (laughs) So, you know, of course, like he's feeling like vibrational bonds through genetic memory and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Dig that. Dig it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to try to stretch your mind a little bit. This is something that uh, 
I've been kind of like chewing on and like swishing around and like, is the audience ready for this kind of thing? But I've decided that, um, you know, it's just time to pull the deck out and just lay it on the table, man. Um, and of course, it's my hopes that one day when my daughter's old enough to tolerate the insane amount of fuck words we use, um, she can look through this and sort of piece together her own knowledge, her own wisdom, you know. But um, I want to ask you a question, Stephen. What do jellyfish, space and time, and the structure of the soul all have in common? Fuck. You're asking me a riddle? Like, you know who I am? I was just packing a bowl. Um, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll save you the trouble. Uh, yeah, there you go. And I'll save you the trouble. That's... um. That's a means of illustrating the way that um, our oversoul reaches through space and time and animates each of our individual characters. Like people want to think that their past lives and their future lives are all in sequence, but time is a fucking illusion. It's all happening at once. And if you can conceive of your oversoul as like that head of the jellyfish and all the tentacles. Uh, the animating elements of all your individual characters throughout space and time, then you have this sense of a uh, oneness. And I, I guess I should have thrown in a neuron because it kind of does the same thing. Uh, but it also mirrors the structure of the universe with like uh, galaxies interweaving, um, which is quite a concept to chew on. Um, you really have to suspend your idea of of time being sequential for this illustration to make sense. So tell me, tell me how that feels to you. <coughs> like I'm coughing. <coughs> oh, shit. We're experiencing technical difficulties. Uh, the opinions and <laughs> voices of Stephen Walton are <laughs> his and his alone. The most of the personalities. <laughs> Okay, so while he's uh, clearing out his mucus, um, the concept of the oversoul is different than the concept of spirit. Okay, spirit is all and everything, all pervading. It does have a source with the creator, but your oversoul is directly in charge of who you are and your character and the incarnations you choose. And that doesn't necessarily limit itself to your human form. Actually, human animal forms don't take a lot of energy to run, which is why something like this is possible. Well, it's All like right, six grams. It's like six grams, right? When you die, the soul's like, is that how much it weighs? Yeah, the that's how much. Like, that's how much your body yeah. loses. Um, right at the moment of and death. It's, <clears throat> it's also a misconception. Like people say, like my my soul inside me. No, the soul contains your body. Your body is animated by energy. So it's not like it doesn't right. live inside you and it's not trapped inside you. Matter of fact, if you can see auras, you'll see that most people are huge. Like like their yeah, energy like, is huge. And they yeah, have chakras my, like outside their body, like above their head. My chakra is well hung, all right? And... <laughs> You can see it coming from a mile away. I said uh, above your head, not below your belt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you said you said oversoul. I've never heard yeah. of this. I've never heard of this term. Okay, so and that's that's a colloquialism. This is a way of distinguishing between your personal like the the guy in charge of you versus like the guy who created everything. And this is what I'm saying. I'm trying to in introduce advanced vocabulary for the for the audience. Like as as I get on in my own spiritual journey, I'm figuring I'm about halfway done through this particular incarnation. And I like to sit around and talk about dicks and drink beer and all that kind of stuff, but I do want to leave some um bits of wisdom 
Cause I, you know, despite being sick and, and being a fuckhead and all that, I do feel like I turned a personal corner um, somewhere towards the end of January, beginning of February. And I felt like the entire momentum of the universe just shift for the better. And the thing that I got was that I just really need to start speaking out and, and saying what I know. And it's cute to think about ETs, but the benevolent ones don't come here to make you in awe of them and, and make you revere them and worship our technology and all that kind of shit. No, 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 no. That kind of thing happened way in the past. And, and that's not advisable because they don't want to fucking babysit us. What they want to do is turn us back to ourselves and have us learn about our spirit and about how reality actually is because too many people are stuck in their smartphones and on MSNBC and on Reddit and on porn and whatever, you know, that they don't move the way. What do you think? And I have to honest, like I just, if I can interject for a moment, cool. what do you think yeah. has been more harmful to the spiritual development of we as a species? Do you think it has been modern day technology or the sequestering of spiritual connection and information from the monotheistic pantheons over the last 2000 years? Well, we just traded one God for another, didn't we? And, and it all ah, built... American gods, right? Yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Minus the giant shit. We don't need to talk about Look, I, you know, was just talking with that chick. I was talking to, she was like, I was, she was talking about, I'm watching Halo. I was like, all right, that's cool. She was like, yeah, but the guy that apparently does Halo, he's an American gods. And I was like, I had to cut yeah. that off. And she's yeah. like, why did you stop watching it? I said, because the gay gin fucked me up. That yeah. gay gin just destroyed my ability to watch the show. Uh, and Sporky knows what I'm talking about. Because when that came out, he would not leave me alone with that gay gin. Uh, oh, yeah. You got to fast forward to that part if you're not. You have to look. Listen, yeah. I'm look. HBO I got watched, really gay, dude. Even like Game of Thrones has like too much man meat in it. If you ask. Yeah, me. yeah. Well, yeah, well I, I, I don't look. Hey, this is the thing, right? Game of Thrones early on, before they went far left, before they went progressive, and you know, and yeah. you and you can tell the difference because when they went progressive, the show fell apart and just. just did, sure crashed did. and burned. You sure know what I mean? Did. I'm Very not going to show my, from the books. Like, right. Yeah. I'm not going to show myself naked anymore because I'm too popular. What bitch? You've been giving us tits and ass since day one. You know, I'm yeah. excuse me. All right. Anyway, so <laughs> Queen of the Dragons. <laughs> yeah, get the fuck out of here. Uh, and you, anyway, uh, yeah, but you're right. Listen, I don't mind for okay. I'm not saying I want to see it, but if I'm going to watch a show with a lot of fucking in it. You know, a lot of tits and ass. Uh, I don't care if there's dong. You know, like, okay, that's for the ladies. Like, if I'm, I'm with a chick watching this show or something, like, I want to fuck this chick. So, whatever, look at dong. Uh, and I, I well, like Spartacus, right? Spartacus had a lot of gay shit in there. But those fags were kicking ass. They sure. were cutting heads off. and say, Like, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care if that dude and that dude are, is, is in a relationship. Because when they go out on the battlefield, that's who I want next to me. There you know, like, that dude's killing. All right. But when it's just like when it's that gay that gay gin was like there was no reason for it. There's no reason for it for the well, level of absolute magical dong moon god limp wristed worshiping gayness that fucking took. A, I couldn't do it. I can't do it. Modern so, Hollywood wants to interpose its own type of like gayness upon historical gayness. Like yes. It's it's weird, and I wish Black Angus was here to talk about this with us. But uh, <laughs> get the, it was get the, get the bisexual tranny banger. You know, here. well, <laughs> we we might as well consult the authority. <laughs> but if you think about it, like like historically, the Romans and the Greek army, especially the Spartans, they they did practice man love, and like women so were just the samurai. Yeah, women were just there to like uh, produce more children. And I'm not condoning that, and I'm not saying that's I what am. I'm into. And Women I'm not have saying, a place. Fuck the well, West. No, I'm, I'm talking about gayness, dude, right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. So I, I don't practice that myself. I'm not into that myself, but I'm not disparaging that if that's what you're into. I'm just saying that the modern Hollywood conception and its uh, injection, <laughs> and I use that term deliberately, Harvey Weinstein, P. Diddy-like injections. Yeah, if 
into oh. modern mythological, you know, they've, they've proven that if you watch a movie, it's kind of, it's hitting the same spots in your brain as the spots that, uh, activate during dream time. Also, right. But, and it also has to do with the frequency of sound that they're putting out too. They change music Correct. in order to agitate the human mind. And they also do it with film. They sure did. I was actually talking with my aunt about the change of music. Cause she was a flautist back in the day. Mm-hmm. And, uh, she's like, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? I was just like, ah, oh, you, you baby spirit. Yeah. Frequency has everything to do with everything. Yeah, of course it does. It's, yeah. it's the basis of everything, which everything you, you still haven't answered my question about the jellyfish image. I did. I said fluidity. Did you fluidity? Yeah. But okay. Well, maybe open that up. Cause that's really what I'm trying to open talk what about. Up. Oh, dude, you know, you asked me a question. I gave you an answer. I don't, what do you mean? Open. I don't, I don't know what to open. Uh, okay. Let's talk about no time. Time is an illusion. Let's talk about that. Okay. Um, it is. Fuck time. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything is happening at once. It is the idea there. So like oh, oh, uh, oh, 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 okay. I, I can do this. I can do this. <clears throat> okay, spell. Spellcraft. I can do this. Um, okay. When I commit to, to casting a spell. There is a reason why me and other mystics since the beginning of time use certain names um, or uh, because or gods or images of gods, because throughout the history of what we consider to be time, the imp- an impression has been created, a frequency has been created, a connection to source. All right. Uh, could have been could have been new at one point, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when the uh, when the invention or the connection was created. The vibrational gestation lasts forever because time is a construct. Also, this is why you can manifest backwards. Um, you, your future self can affect your, well, quote unquote, future self can affect your past self. That's why it's important to keep your shit on lock at all times as much as possible. When I cast a spell and I invoke a god, if I invoke Janus, it, I am not just tapping into the idea of what Janus is to me. I am also, um, I am also summoning connect or connecting with the impressions that have been placed through the collective consciousness outside of our realm of time and in a, in the, in the spiritual realm, uh, that it, it cuts across centuries, decades, houses, homes, regions, anything that connected itself to Janus. I am tapping into the collective energy that that vibrational frequency creates. And in that way, time is a construct energetically. There you go. Well, it's interesting. So if time is a construct uh, as it as it relates to casting, um, if we're talking about no time, and this is the idea that I kind of floated out while you were coughing, I, I should have waited, but I was impatient. I was um, listening. I was just coughing. Yeah, yeah, the the idea that all of your quote unquote past lives and quote unquote future lives are all occurring in one instant, and that's why I use the term oversoul, and that's why I use the jellyfish thing. If you imagine like the head of the jellyfish as the the personal godhead and all of the tentacles reaching down into your incarnate lives, and then all of that information going to the oversoul. You get the experience all at once. But there has to, listen, I don't know if it's being trapped in a, I don't know if it's a spirit living and through a manifested physical experience for me in the third dimension at this moment, but there has to be a a, a clockwork, a clean, you know what I mean? Like there has to be steps that's your body clock. And then there's also that, um, willing forgetfulness, like forgetfulness is a fucking tool of of this realm. You know, you can't, well, you can, I was going to say you can't have it all at once, but you can train yourself to recall all that shit in time, at least through this physical vehicle. It's different through 
um, non-human physical vehicles. Some some races are born knowing what they knew, you know. Right, um, and, and some humans are born with the veil lifted. That's true too. But the that and that's our, our greatest limitation is our greatest opportunity. The fact that we are born willingly forgetting everything allows us to recreate everything anew. And I don't mean yes. Anu from fucking Egypt. I'm, I'm saying no. Anu. Hail Anu. <laughs> hail Anu. Um, uh, hail Ishtar. Uh, I look at um, uh, the when it comes to like the... That's a great way of looking at it. When you're like, uh, it allows you to manifest new, to create new. Yes. So like that's a so that's a part of the system. Like there is a system. Like okay, yes. you, you go into saying time is a construct, but it is an element. It is an, it has to be just like gravity, spirit, uh, emotion, like love. You know, uh, love, hate, like these things. These are not just uh, neurochemical peptides in your bloodstream. Like these energies right. are a vibrational frequency which create things. Um, you know, and this is why I think that you have certain souls that are tied to the earth within um, confined areas because of some kind of demon or hate attachment. Uh, poltergeists, for instance. Uh, this is why I believe that. But there, you know, you say like, you, okay, time is not as powerful as we believe it to be. And as far as our ability to impact this reality, the enfleshed reality around us, right. uh, because it's because it's spirit form. But there is a mechanism, like there is a measure of steps. There, I cannot believe time, that there is not. Yeah, time and space is that mechanism. Uh, the the thing that allows us to realize that we're not all one and that everything's not happening at once is that distance of time and space. If you look up at the sky. Every star that you see is millions or billions right. or possibly trillions of light years away, which means that we're looking at our own past. Right. A past that yeah. we participated in. You know what, what I do you mean? mean? Like as, as stardust or as energy? Well, both. I mean, like our physical bodies were definitely churned in the bowels of the stars, but for most of us, especially the most awake of us, we've already done all this before. We've we've evolved from like 1D through 12D, and right, we right. came back to 3D to do it for a different reason. You know, now some people came here to change things. Some people came here to like exercise things from their experience. Some people came here just to, uh, you know, like, Suck men's souls through their penis. Well, and and I wasn't trying to make it that personal, but to provide you with the opportunity <laughs> by by portraying that character of evil for the advancement of your soul. I saw this right. meme the other day that was just like, you know, and it had this like, uh, it was like, it was like Christopher Lee smoking a cigarette like really hard, and it said God watching you knowing that he sent you somebody demonic in order to advance your spirit oh that's, that's so on, true yeah that's on my instagram if you guys go follow me it's immortal coil but like the i and the l's are ones instead of how i spell it because i'm there's an cryptic. angel number there there's an angel number there somewhere that's there a good is. way to put that right yeah. so like you know I, I look back at um um uh, the, the reason I made I did Dragonstorm, and to a degree, yeah, thankful. I'm actually thankful for the advancement. I needed to partake in like moving forward from that, but but you're right. You, there, the obstacles, and the negative people, the negative people that are placed into your life, are there for you to overcome or to make you stronger. So they do have a function. Darkness has a function. Evil has a function. I'm not saying I'm not condoning evil people and evil acts. What I'm saying is that 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 does serve a function. There was something that allowed that to happen to manifest. There was something well, that allowed is, the door like, to open for that. How could you know the light if you don't know the dark? How could you know the near if you didn't yeah. know the far? How could you know the this if you didn't know the that? You know that kind of thing. We need we need polarity at least in this universe. We did in order for our consciousness to consider itself because we had to 
where we come from, from the source, there's nothing but light. There's nothing but goodness. There's nothing but ecstasy. There's nothing but whatever. But in order for us to know ourselves and to give our creator a glimpse of who they are, we need to take ourselves through the travails of darkness and fall into time, fall into space um, to suffer. You know, which is kind of fucked up because it's suffering not... brings enlightenment, though. Like, yeah, yeah, Buddha. yeah. And and that's what I was gonna say. Um, well, number one, the Buddha of all the religions, Buddha was human, and and wasn't an extraterrestrial. But number two, and Buddha's also non-theistic. That's true. I mean, this was a man who was born as a prince, and he went and sat underneath a tree. Cause he decided fuck it. And then he came up with a brilliant idea, which other people have tried to corrupt, but like the purest Buddhism is pure Terran human thought. I yeah. mean, albeit filtered through the guy's spirit, you know, the spirit was obviously from somewhere else, but Buddha was the only guy who didn't claim to be a son of God or like a, you know, from somewhere else or from heaven. Or from no, heaven. he was truly of that. We are call connected. We are all yep. the same freak. We are all the same energy. And that's why I love it. And also the perfection and mastery of self, which is something that the Japanese took heavily yep. in their samurai culture. And you see, I think that in a lot of ways you see the perfection of um, the growth of uh, form and spirit through groups like samurai. And and their established and their culture of perfection, absolutely. But it was also a demonstration that our particular life form can and has and will achieve enlightenment even in the span of one lifetime. You know, and absolutely kind of wraps into the idea that I was talking about earlier: willing forgetfulness and a short, tiny lifespan allows us to advance rapidly compared to. Um, extraterrestrial civilizations who sometimes take thousands of years for a single lifetime, thousands of our years, I should say. Uh, well, you know, but for their but organism also, to complete its fucking thing. But if I can, if I may, uh, you, you look at um, uh, okay, a, 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 a life form with a short life span who has to go through the rigors of truth and connection uh, and obstacles, you know, in a hurried, in a hurried pace, but also gets a restart really quick. Yep. That, that to me is the, that to me is the grinding levels of a D and D game. All right. Of a, right? that is the, that That's those a are fantastic your illustration. So it's, it's kind of like respawning with all your EXP. Yes. Right, over and over and over again. Right, and then once yes. you get to the higher levels, it's hard to hit that next level. You've got to kill a lot of monsters. You've got to do a lot of dungeons. You've got to before you get that next level. And I think that well, that's yeah. where like ETs are. Well, and and that's also why you take like vacation lifetimes. So, like, say you have like three or four motherfucker of a hard, difficult ass dick up the ass kind of lifetimes then maybe you take a vacation lifetime and you're you know a jellyfish on on saturn's moon or something you know? yeah you know it's, it's that's that's a difficult thing for me to i kind of go with the more druidic way of looking at incarnation and this is where we differ and it probably has a lot to do with experience sure um is that you know you in, you don't go backwards when you incarnate you don't you know what i mean like if you've come from the animal realm into a higher consciousness realm you're not going to go back to a blade of grass well and who's to say the manta rays on you know saturn's moons aren't intelligent dude maybe they're more intelligent than we are well i kind of took it to jellyfish i kind of took a more terrestrial <laughs> okay no it's it's all good man um i i agree we don't we don't progress backwards we're not going to be a human and then like in the next life be a snail because being a snail is easy. But now, then again, um, well, but actually I have a question on that, if you don't mind, yeah. in your opinion, because I, I, I kind of have difficulties grasping this. So what if you uh, embrace demonic energy? Like if you're, you're here to be evil, right? You're here, you know, uh, for whatever reasons. What happens if you become, like if you embrace the demons, if you become that evil and then you die? You know, like it, there's, there is a life review. There is a, yeah. 
I know as a spellcaster that there is, you have to be careful because there is a price, so to speak, when you are resonating, dealing with um, uh, intense energy, right? You're connecting with that energy. You're becoming a part of that vibration. So what yeah. happens with people who are truly, what happens to the Hitlers and yeah. the Narc Xs um, when, they, when they pass on? Like, do because spirits do get trapped in this realm for a time. We we do have they can haunting. They have things. an attachment to it. Yeah, absolutely. So where do you um, think that energy goes, or what happens to people who live in that low vibrational frequency throughout an incarnation? Well, have you ever heard of a med bed? No. No. Okay. Well, it, it's kind of like on Star Trek where you go and you lay down and like. Beverly Crusher comes and like waves her fucking wand and all your fucking shit's healed. Except in spirit form, it, it's kind of like you take a nap. You take a nap for a little while while your fucking shit's cleaned. Now, that might be a difficult concept, and especially like in relation to like Hitler, who history recalls as one of the most evil people who have ever lived. But or Sekibai, who drain your soul through your dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like hell, I mean, you can recreate hell as your own sub dimension if you believe you need to be like poked in the butt by a little red guy with a pitchfork. But that's you put a pineapple up your ass. Yeah, that's that's a sub creation, and and don't turn on Black Angus more than you have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll get back bites, not kisses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's it's one of those things, man. I, I can hear a back echo. Do you have headphones in? Yeah, did you just start hearing it now? I can hear it. Okay. Okay, I don't hear it anymore. Okay. Well, that's because that's because I was muted. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe pop out and pop back in. He appears, he whispers in your ear, he disappears. He hunts, he rises, he runs. The incredible disappearing co-host act. This is a prestige starring uh, Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale and David Bowie as Nikola Tesla. All right, Stefan Urkel, where are you? I want to explain this shit, but I want to explain it before. There you are. Yeah, the link literally sent me to the uh, the last stream, and oh, then weird. sent me to this one. I know. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Strange. Okay, so for the the Hitlers and the Genghis Khans and the Stalins and all that kind of stuff, um, and Western yeah. women, and Western women, you're funny. Um, I'm serious about that a little bit. I have a gripe with Western women. That's not our topic for tonight, but I just wanted to say I do. And we can talk about that later if you wish. I'm sorry. Please continue. Yeah. Fuck these bitches. Yeah, that's cool. Um, there might be room for that a little bit later. Um, because as soon as you pop out of your human physical being and you're divorced from your prejudices and the wirings of your particular brain, you have a holy shit, oh my God moment. And you have a kind of like, kind of like Anakin, what have I done? You know? Um, and for those who have uh, committed atrocities, yeah, you have to have like a soul scrub down. It's, it's only fucking natural. You must. Okay. So you think that they, okay. And first off the, the med bay thing you were talking about, med I bay. actually med bed. Yeah. That thing. Um, when I was, uh, when I was talking to, the psychic medium from several months ago or six months ago now, but six months ago, she took me to a place like that. She made me meditate through the universe. Like she made me try like the meditation practice was going to the universe and then going to like a hospital to like an emergency room and then being taken to a surgery where there were angelic beings or beings like, um, what did she, how did she put it? She put like, uh, like, like, uh, Archangel Raphael energy kind of thing. And, she and might be an were, interesting guest to have on at some point. Oh God, I wish you know she's. I wish we could. Um, but uh, she, she was talking about that, like when she took that secondary from me, that was dark, the one that loved my ex, 
the one that you know what I mean. And it was, and she said, she this thing would come out when you were, when when you were having sex, and I'll be like, she was right, like because when I would climax with her, uh, it, this th that thing would come out, like I would change, I would growl, like I would actually come and like do that, um, sure. and she like just but she said that was a part of uh long story short that was a part of some uh, defense mechanism i created when i was younger and needed to be removed but that's but that's where she had me she it was like a um like a, a surgery like a like a like a, a doctor's office or something and i was being worked on by entities i guess i uh, yeah well and, and is that along the same have... lines what you're talking about it is, it is, but um, it differs when you're talking about working on. So we talked about sick psychics and how you manifest fucking illness through energetic fucking bullshit that physically manifests in your body. Before it physically manifests in your body, it energetically starts uh, working away. So, infiltrating, right? Infiltrating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of times, psychic surgery, if if you have a competent surgeon of course and uh i trust stevens but i'm i'm just saying there's a lot of like cape wearing fucking feather wielding idiots out there so well, look, i'm not trying to kind of i am not trying to say i'm a psychic surgeon i am no, 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 no. a man looking for enlightenment but i do have a sniper rifle it's right on my altar. It's called my <laughs> wand. And that sniper rifle, when loaded, and, 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 and when that barrel, when I look down at that scope, it causes change. <laughs> well, but let me say it this way, man. I don't know you as somebody who, like, shows up on TV with your turban on and with your magic wand trying to heal people okay that's not your gimmick i am not that's, yeah i am not doing that yeah, yeah yeah that's something that you have and that you own and that you wield and that you have been trained in through your various ways but that's not yes. your gimmick no i'm it's talking not. about yeah i'm talking about gimmicky motherfuckers i'm talking about buyer beware that kind of well thing. i i fail by example does that count <laughs> sure <laughs> Why not? Um, but essentially what you were offered and what you went through was the experience that we have towards, well, actually after physical death is that you're able to go and like clean yourself and uh, rinse yourself off and lick yourself wherever you want and also rejoin your, hot. your, rejoin your spirit group and like you go home and you're happy and it's just like, yay, you know? Um, I, yeah. So do you ahead. think, do you think that people, I don't think dude, you're asking me uh, what I know, right? <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, what? Okay. The, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. What? I'm, I'm just, I'm just fussing with words. Go ahead. Uh, uh, do I think there's a life review, right? So yeah. you believe in the life review, right? Yeah, but it's not before before some like a uh, holy council of whatever the fuck. It's just kind of like, how do you think you did? Yeah. All right. What would you do different? Okay. Yeah. How do you want to do it next time? Okay, cool. But punish do that. There has to be. The, I, I, it's I, I, maybe, nah. it's, maybe it's a, maybe it's selfishness, I guess. But like, it's self-imposed. You can certainly experience that sub realm if you wish to create that. Of course, absolutely. Uh, well, no, well that, but that's the thing, right? Like, no, well, I'm talking. I'm talking about the idea of underworld hell type places. I, I hate to use the term hell because it's so Christian. But no, and that's fine. That's that's a sub realm that you can visit if you wish to create it for yourself. Well, that's what I'm saying. So there's like, no okay. need. There's no, no need. There, there's no need. So a person is no. a dirtbag piece of shit yeah. uh, who hurts other people and uses and lies and destroys fucking people through their, through yeah. their life. And you're telling me that there's no punishment. Okay. So there's no punishment, but he may wish in his future incarnation to revisit that sort of experience from the other side and he might be recommended by his oversoul and his spirit guides to do so but you also have to think that he is 
also participating in other people's grand schemes and in a in a tiny bit of like unselfishness he is providing the villainy to other people's experience because perhaps they at some point were evil dirt bag selfish pieces of shit everyone has to right you have to experience everything and in it, the realm and it all cycles into itself man like the darkness is needed to experience the light and if the light does not know the light for who it is if it's pure innocence somebody has to step up and volunteer to be that darkness for that particular spirit mm. do you get it yeah, I get it. This is why I cast spells because fuck people. No, I get it. <laughs> um, I do because you're right. You're like, uh, yeah, all right, I'm done. I don't know what. I'll I'll, I'll go off. <clears throat> no, 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 dude. Um, these are all very good questions, and this is why I like you as my co-host because this all like sits in my fucking brain like all day. Like I walk around and barely talk to anybody because barely anybody is worth talking to. But yeah, the reason I am. Yeah. Yeah. The reason I enjoy the show is because you can pull the shit out of me and we yeah. can do so in a public forum. That's going to be stroke it. Yeah. And, and be far wide and reaching <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> through the Man. annals of time. <laughs> my, my chakra is well hung like a fucking Cthulhu tapeworm. <laughs> <laughs> it's dead, but dreaming. Oh, um, that's groovy. No, um, I mean, that's the same way in like a, in a, a more physical, uh, more physical aspect of the spiritual experience. And that's isolation after traumatic experience, which is what I've done. I've isolated. Yeah. Um, because you, you cut down when you go through, it's much like spirit. I mean, every, the, all these things reflect one another as above, so below. When you look at the, when you heal from a traumatic experience as a physical being, uh, you, you see things differently. You learn experiences and see things and see people differently. So you isolate to cut yourself off from anyone who is trying to drain you, like energy vampires. People are trying to take advantage of your name or smear your name. You, you, you back up. And it's not a retreat so much as it is like protecting yourself and creating, gaining clarity through introspective isolation. Um, so like energetically, as far as the spirit goes, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. It's also, that also happens mentally. This happens physically throughout these three realms, all stitched together, connected. It's kind of the theme of tonight. So yeah, definitely. Um, well, and I like that you said as above, so below, I mean, that's like an old truism, but seriously, if you like invented the most powerful fucking telescope, you'd see yourself looking back at yourself. If you looked far and yes, right. The curvature. Enough. Same thing with the microscope, you know, like uh, there's a very famous image. I know anybody who's tuned into this channel has probably seen it where it showed the structure of neurons in the brain and it showed the structure of galactic clusters in the universe. There you go. This, yes. This universe, I should say. <laughs> And that's the thing is uh, the universe was somebody's idea once, you know, designing galaxies uh -huh. and universes aren't such a advanced skill. I mean, a lot of us, when we're um, asleep at night, we, we do shit like that. And especially yes. in between lives, we do shit like that. Yeah. That's yeah. who the fuck we are, dude. <clears throat> that is so, so true. He is spitting real truth. <laughs> your dream realm your dream state so to speak uh is a doorway that can lead to any number of realities dimensions um and connections to those who are on your current uh manifest manifestative plane mm -hmm. understand when you make major decisions in your life impactful directions decisions thoughts this, and this, by decisions of, you know, I don't just mean action. I don't just mean like physical action. I mean an act of creating a new way of thinking, uh, moving forward in your future. 
that these things you you jump between realities you create different realities at the same time we exist in a multiverse mm -hmm. it, it appears to us as though this is one stable flux of energy and matter around us but it is it's all fluidic going back to the fluidic ideal yeah. right? this is so when you decide you're going to change your life go back to school when you decide you are done with someone mm -hmm. when you decide you are done with a way of thinking you jump between realities and within right. this within the same construct right so like there is a universe out there where coil and i never started doing this show okay. where i said no right and that existed but because we chose to do this we 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 coalesced ourselves together with energetically yeah, within a realm with that is braid the possibilities into a single yes Eve. thank you yes yeah yes sir and that's and, and that's and that's kind of spellcraft too uh to a degree it is of course it is and it takes a conscious intent and the more conscious you are about your intent and the more focused you are about your intent the more clear your reality becomes to the point where you're walking through it doing it as you fucking live and breathe you know and in our brightest biggest moments we've had that experience where you're one with the gods or with god or however you want to fucking explain that to yourself and yeah you're powerful and you feel it and you know that you're on your true fucking path and purpose and it fucking happens and there's a there's a universe out there where i am banging daisy ridley there is a universe <laughs> out there where I put enough energy into where Riley what Reed is Daisy. one of the fatties and she actually speaks up. <laughs> I'm, Riley Reed looks at our chat. Absolutely. You know um, she does. <laughs> you know she does. Like, these if, weird if, gay we have to make a we have to make a pact. If any one of us ever meets her, we have to pull out the fucking X app and just show her the fucking chat and be like you belong here. <laughs> you belong here. You're a fatty. If I ever see Riley Reed, I'm going to do the same thing I'll do with Daisy Ridley. Fuck the shit out of her. <laughs> oh, you know what? When it comes to Riley, she'd probably bang the shit out of me. Daisy, I, I could, I would tie Daisy up. She's she's getting a collar. She's getting some. She's getting tied down. She's getting a new movie. Have you heard that? Yeah, I'm so, I can't wait for it, bro. You have no idea. I am yeah. so excited. I am so excited. Any, I don't care. I will make a truth with Disney Star Wars if they give me Daisy Ridley. I am good. With that. <laughs> oh my well, god. Well, uh, we were like an entertainment channel before we started talking about like a uh, magic and shit. But you know, hey, I'm I'll going never back to that. Are you? I am. I'm going back to that. Yeah, I put yeah. a short out on author Steve Walton the other week, the other day, and I was like, all right. You know what it was, Coil? So I buddy? post. I post all this. Is a segue for a second. When I post all the time about like narc abuse, this narc abuse. And I'm serious about it. Like I am serious about recovery from narcissistic and sociopathic abuse. Like I seriously am. Um, but like I put one fucking post out that was about like entertainments. It was the, the Mary Sue article uh, about the X-Men. You know, the, the, the Mary Sue cluster B, cluster C personality disorders are out there writing again, trying to get everybody's yeah. attention. You know what I mean? Like, and and I see things so differently now because I went through what they're I went their through. Death and I, throws, dude. Oh, uh, well, yeah, but 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 they just look at these are just fucking sick, toxic people, narcissistic, toxic people who are looking for fucking attention. You know, and I I like going back to manifestation. I was fighting uh, progressives for you know blue haired weirdos and those types for so long that I manifested like the mother of all fucking toxic broads in my life because I was going after because I didn't have any understanding of the types of energies that I was intermingling with while I was going after them and they were coming after me. Uh, again, guys, be careful what you mix yourself into. And yeah. so now I'm at a point where it's like, I saw that I saw that arc. I'm like, you're still around like these toxic people but then i realized yes they're still around because the backlash to it fed they feed one another and this is why we have narcissists yeah. and toxic users and liars in old fandom menace what you would call the fandom menace is why we have them yeah. and it's and another aspect of it is uh sometimes people like cheer for the villain right you ever watch scarface and cheer for scarface sure. of course you Absolutely. fucking did. so people that's why so i love darth vader dude <laughs> I said, right well it's like people cheer for van skyver because he's a fucking villain you know like he's an evil dude but people want to see that that 
you know, they, 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 they fucking celebrate that for some, it's crazy human nature. These things all exist. The feed, the feedback loop between the Hollywood weirdos and the far left progressives and the Twitter hate mobs and the people that were the fandom menace and that became whatever they became and continue this feedback loop. Like, yes, there may be an exchange of power and energy, but the negative fuel that was sought by those toxic people created the backlash because they wanted a backlash because they wanted negative fuel and attention yeah. for their craziness. And they did manifest that. But now yeah. you have, in my opinion, opinion just my opinion now you have two equally um uh two groups two clusters yeah. which equally have the ability to do good and evil at the same time they created um, their own adversary absolutely well, yes. and they right and we were a part of that kind of why i had to back off from that now i will always consider myself phantom menace adjacent but uh once i realized like this kind of thing, I mean, not what we're talking about right now, but like what we were talking about like 20 minutes ago, that kind of thing is needed in this realm. Well, it is. And they're going back to that balance between you, like you said, some people are evil or dark in order to advance yeah. another person. Like it's voluntarily evil. Yeah. Right. To this day, like I still, you know, I'm not trying to manifest anything because I'm done with the connection. But the what I went through in the last several years, I truly believe that was an agreement. <laughs> I'm going to come into your life and hurt you. I'm going to come into my was. life and, and offer you the ability to learn. And the other person said, well, I'm going to come into your life and hurt you hard as fuck. There uh, you go. And, and those two forces hit each other and then led to what they led to. Well, through and decision, through decision, which is supposed yeah. to be growth. Yeah, well, and it, it helps to think about it, like, in terms of, like, kindergarten. If you're like, gee, I want to learn how to love and heal, but I don't have anything to teach me what, um, right? you know, pain and death is. And then somebody else comes up and goes, hey, I'll pretend to be evil and hurt you and do all this evil shit to you. And, and you're like, but you're so, like, beautiful and, like, full of light and shit. When will you do it? Well, I'll do it in the next physical lifetime. How about that? And you're like, okay. Yeah. 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 Like, like Forrest yeah. Gump. Okay. <laughs> Dude, that's not funny. Cause I feel like Forrest. I no, felt like totally. Forrest. Totally. I mean, that's, and that's, that's, a modern, a whore. <laughs> that's another modern parable. Yeah. And Jenny was a whore. She treated him like shit. He was there his whole life. Forrest Gump might've been a simp. He caught. He was. Like, he he was immune to AIDS somehow, but he had to raise her AIDS baby after she died. <laughs> you know, and, well, and, and the craziest <laughs> thing is that uh, right, but you know, and the, the but the, it's that movie is so real talk. Listen, it that is. movie is so real talk because because Jenna, right? Jenna. It was it wasn't it wasn't until Jenny had been screwed over, done a bunch of drugs, fucked a bunch of dirt bags, been yeah. fucked over, beaten a shit out of, ran a train like by garbage. the Black Panther. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, you know what I mean? Like all that fucking shit. And then yeah. she gets to the end of her fucking life. Literally gets to the end of her life and goes, "Oh, this guy really did love me. Maybe I should, you know, be with it." You know and I mean, and and but yeah. that dude still picks it up. That yep. simp that fucking yep. ass, that idiot, still yep. picks it up. Yep. And That's is there for that bitch that he loved. That's real love, right? But yeah. So his, maybe she maybe on that on that parable, she was the dark spirit and he was the light. Oh, absolutely she was a dark spirit. Fuck Jenny. Uh, <laughs> fuck her. No, but he, he taught her love throughout that physical lifetime. But she but came she down. She didn't want to learn it. Nah, no, nah, she was resistant to it. And and that happens too. You asked about that. Like, like what happens when you resist and when you become one with the Yeah, because I whatever. was forest and I just dealt with a fucking jetty. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Hey. yeah. But it it turns into the thing where even if if you decide to embark upon the dark path, the light's always gonna be there to confront you. You can be palpatine all you want, but you know what? Yoda's gonna be there at the end of the you know, fucking day. You know, you brought up uh, Darth Vader earlier, and I yes, would like sir. to say, I would like to say, I love, I love Star Wars. <laughs> I love no, I do. I love. I'm a fan of Minister Story, and I love Star yeah. Wars. Yeah. But I was watching Naruto. Are you familiar with Naruto? Um, not as familiar as Star Wars, but I know who okay. Naruto right. is. And okay, okay. It. There's a character on this show 
that I, I a villain on this show because I like villains too. You know, sure. <laughs> here I am out here fighting. <laughs> oh, no, never mind. Anyways, <laughs> uh, <laughs> right? Uh, but there's this villain called Orochimaru, right? And I love him because he, most of his powers come from the serpent. Like he's like a he's like an immortal serpent god, yeah, and he. Yeah, right. he's a necromancer. He's mm -hmm. he 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 learned how to take his chakra, his chi, and be able to reincarnate himself instantly too, bro. And it's, his his original body is well since gone. It's literally the his 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 form looks like his form, like who he was. But you can rip the skin off his face, like like you like a reptilian from V. You can like rip yeah. the skin from his face and it looks like the body that he's inhabiting at the moment. But at the same time, he could be mid battle and he can have like his bottom half cut off and his mouth will literally like split open and he will just oh, jump. Weird. Yeah, his entire body will jump out. This dude is the scariest motherfucker. Like you step into this ring and you are you okay. You step into this ring with him and you give it your all if you walk away, you win. <laughs> I'm not saying you, you wow. beat him. Yeah, I love I love Orochimaru. I, I love this character. Uh, but I'm looking at this character, and I'm like, my son and I were having an argument because my son loves Anakin. He's he's a big Anakin fan. And I, I guess to, to a degree, I was a Darth Vader fan, so I am an Anakin fan too. But The whole journey is the fucking story. Right. So, but yeah. this is the thing. I'm looking at Orochimaru. I'm making a comparison. I'm like, hold on. I love Darth Vader and all, but... Darth Vader was only Darth Vader because he was manipulated by a galactic narcissist. Mm -hmm. And the reason and the reason that he died is because he had a change of fifis. And I don't know if that's is that ultimately badass? That's not really ultimately badass. Actually, like Vader for as strong for as much as he could kill and as strong as he was and his ability to to, to menace, you know, and maim and kill <laughs> is kind of weak. Well, yeah, I, Anakin I think was weak. I think that's the point of the whole story is that um, he, in his is in his uh, original human form, he died trying to do the thing that he thought was right, but in doing so, he lost everything that he was fighting for, mm -hmm. and then uh, he endured an identical amount of lifetime as a uh, near human. He was a cyborg. He, mm -hmm. he was more machine than man, but it was the love of his son that um, turned him back. And I'll tell you this, Stephen, showing compassion is infinitely harder, but infinitely more rewarding than uh, displaying cruelty. Damn you for being real. Damn you for <laughs> saying that. I would be angry, Coil. <laughs> <sighs> Shit. Oh shit! I hate the fucking truths you drop because I want to be a <laughs> look. I I want to be the troubled light dark bad guy. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're dragging you up, sir. <laughs> I know. Fuck! I don't want to hear this. I said dragon. <laughs> yeah, you did. And you know what? I didn't even take a dragon. I, my mind tried to take it to some kind of dick motif. <laughs> well, there you go. Um. <clears throat> So before we move on to our next topic, I want to say hail to the chat at current live. We have three of you savage motherfuckers watching us hail. and who knows how many in the replay. Um, these things are destined to be classic. Um, I know it. You if know you it. have gotten this far on the replay, thank you for putting up with me. Yeah. <laughs> at, at the same time, uh, we want to encourage you to hit the thumbs up, share this out. Uh, throw this out wherever you think it's relevant. You can clip the show. I don't give a fuck. Um, just provide a link back to the original source and you're good to go. Um, and make even, sure to support your... I'm sorry. No, well, I, I even if you like hate everything I say, you know, throw up a, a counter fucking argument and you can have your little thing in the window and, you know, your face or whatever and just rip me to shreds. I love that shit because it gives me an opportunity to clarify my point. Dude, it's so. not you that they want to kill. All right. It's not the intergalactic <laughs> stud. They're going Bolton's up there. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's like an evil chewy. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Yeah. <sighs> 
Thank you. Uh, Thank you, everybody who's there. Make sure to support your independent creators out there. It doesn't matter who you like. It doesn't matter who likes who. It doesn't matter what lunch table to sit at. If you enjoy their content, you enjoy who they are, please make sure to smash the like, share out the link, and let people know who your favorite creators are. We all rise together. And uh, thank you guys very much for being here. Appreciate you. That's right. Um, likely next week we'll be broadcasting from Stevens because I think we're going to trade off week to week. And you then, think? Uh, what about the, yeah. sa- the, the the Savage and the Sage? And the Sage I love and the that. Savage. I love that. We need to. Like, I want to do that on my channel. Yeah, yeah. Um, we need to figure out a date and a time. Let's do that on um, my other backstage. channel. Yeah. Let's do that back soon. We can stream on author. If you want to do, if you really want to do this, like week to week, we can do it on author Stephen Walton. I'm trying to rebuild that. I'm rebuilding that channel. Well, I do like that, but I'm also trying to think of a time that's not so like fucking late for us both. Unless the chat likes this time, obviously it gives the Netherlands time to fucking view this. Um, there's a lot of things going around in my head. We'll we'll talk about that backstage, man. All right, um, we'll stroke we'll stroke that that flaccid chakra. Uh, yeah. Um right. so I want to float out some other strange ideas. Now, if the jellyfish idea wasn't strange enough, this idea, which is very near and dear to Stephen Walton, might uh might be. Okay. Sex with a jellyfish? Sex with a jellyfish. <laughs> Where are we that going would be, with this? That would be tingly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ran out of vodka. I am upgrading to moonshine. It's things are about to get interesting. You're all, all right, good. Go. Um, okay. Outside of Earth's atmosphere, astrology and tarot will not work. Ooh. Think about it. Oh, uh, okay. Well, no, I, I don't have to think about it too much. I'm a terrestrial cat. Yeah. Um, well, because what's the first question astrologers ask? What's your date well, of birth? What was your city? What was your right. time of birth? Right, relevant, right, right. Because you're 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 taking that from a perspective of Gaia positioning, gal- yeah. from galactic central point. The energies involved in in our own cluster, spiral arm, the uh, energy from the past stars that we see, the constellations that are made up that are used in astrology, which are not all of the constellations. There are tons and tons and tons of others. Yep. Um, and the current constellation of the 12 houses around the rising sun, the 13, uh, uh, you know, for the, the messianic God, which is a part of the messianic God uh, tradition, yeah. by the way. Uh, that's why Jesus had 12 disciples. That's right. uh, is even uh, because some of those days are wrong. Scorpio only exists for three days. I'm going way off topic. All right, hold on. So uh, You're really yeah, not. No, You're actually illustrating would- my point. Okay. Oh, oh, all right. But well, okay. so I, right. So Scorpio lasts for three days. Like there's, and there's also thirteen moons. There's thirteen months. Uh, all of these things, um, which didn't change until the Julian calendar, by the way. Uh, fuck those Romans. There. Uh, if you go outside of Terra, then no, astrology would not work unless you're referencing it back to. Like, I think it would work for, uh, no, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work outside of our, of our home. And no. when you, well, you're and, talking and about tarot, what's <laughs> really, what's you, that, why? Okay, because, are you, okay, it's okay, tied to tarot, astrology? Tarot has cards linked to heavenly bodies within souls. Yes, it does. Systems, yes, it does. As well as right. depictions of the fear, earth, hierarchy. Right, right. hierarchy. Okay. Right, 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 right. So those, and I'm not saying that that, that's not a true science, but say like you pull yourself off earth and you sit yourself down on a a planet orbiting Tigeta, which is in the Pleiades. What you'd have to do is you'd have to relearn the entire fucking galaxy. You'd have to order it into constellations you'd have to familiarize yourself with all the heavenly bodies rotating around the same thing you'd have to take account for all the moons for all the you know yeah, 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 seasons yeah, yeah. all that kind right, of thing. right right neptune astrology would be totally different right? yeah yeah you'd have right. to readjust you'd have to retool the the mythology mm-hmm. and and that's the thing is that i'm not saying that it's an untrue science i'm just saying that it wouldn't work the same way somewhere else yeah, you're right. Well, and I mean, and going back, you said untrue science. It is a construct of several different pantheons and ways of thinking that has been molded into what we now understand it to be, which doesn't, which doesn't 
devalue or dilute the legitimacy of it, but there are more refined ways of uh, of performing an astrological chart. Um, when it comes, but you, when it comes to like our point, our localized point in the universe, magic, the principles of magic would be the same on Alpha Centauri, but the elements, the times, um, the alignments would all be different. Well, yeah, as would the physical gravity and like the quality of air and all that kind of stuff. Well, yeah, all, and all of that, of course, adds into it. But I'm just talking like yeah. energetically, like I'm just like, like when I cast a spell, I'm going down to the minute. I'm going down to the moment. I'm going down to the element. I'm going down to the, you know what I mean? Like that's where I'm at with it. A sniper rifle, Lodonis Ravenwolf, not fucking around. You know, I am looking at every element and aspect of the spell I am performing in order to create a resonance wave that is going to manifest exactly what my intention is. And is it those a, elements is it a crystal wand? Is it a earth wand? Is it a it is it's it's it's, it's a big oh, it's upstairs. It's a big well hung wand, sir. It is a <laughs> well hung chakra wand. Um no, actually it's um uh I, I don't want to give away the elements. All okay. I'll say is that we there, can there talk is, about that later. There is quartz. There is quartz at the the tip. Gotcha. Um, yeah, because that's the all everything stone. Anyway, but uh, but it's, it's, but if I were to go to Alva Centauri, the growth of there. the growth of that world, the evolution of it, the different types of foods, substances, fauna, flora, um, all of that, all of the lore. All of the un, all of the underlying connections between each of those elements and living things would have a different energy. The spirit of that planet would have a different energy than Gaia. So I would perform. I could the the idea of casting circle and performing uh, is basically the same. But on Alpha Centauri, I may have it, it may it's an entirely different range of things that one would use in order to create yeah. effects. Well, and, and you think about it, um, Alpha Centauri is the closest star to Sol. Okay, but all the same stars and theoretically constellations are are there. They're just in a different different position, position which so creates different. Yes, oh, they're striking. They're striking whatever planetary body that you're on from a different angle. So you yes. have to adjust your triangles and your fucking acceptance and your. All Absolutely. Kind of also, yeah, yeah. the different the different amount of moons that you've got, the amount of yep. planets, the yep. type of energy that your that your star puts off. The soul yeah. soul is the reason why we have most like the energy that we do. Yep. You know, every yep. planet in the system. Now, let me also float out this gigantic idea for astrologers. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to throw it on the table, buddy. Do it, baby. You don't even know. <laughs> I'm fucking ready, Coil. I know, right? <laughs> I went full fucking shaft, dude. Come on. I know, right? Okay. Some interplanetary societies drive around their own. Um, heavenly body sized craft and they are not subject to these type of sciences because they use thought based technology and they employ holograms that can or holographs that can manifest physical death density so there's no need for portending there's no need for because they're also all psychic And that should be the evolution. Right, well, and that yeah. should be the evolution of species. Uh, um, yeah, because we are all psychic. We're all yeah. connected. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're talking about like the difference. Okay, the original human race. All right, we're talking about Limeria, right? We're talking well, about yeah, yeah, yeah. Go pre, ahead. pre, 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 young Adrias, pre destruction, the last destruction, great destructions of civilizations. Um, the technologies that were used then as we are understanding was more earth based it was using the magnetic lines using energy lines of the earth using crystals using technologies stone. yep using absolutely. stone right because all these things because they understood that everything no matter how solid it is generates frequency yes 
how solid you think it is. It's not really solid. Actually, most things, most of the universe is made up of empty space. And, and within space. that empty space is latent yep. kinetic energy. Yep. Um, so it, it's easy for me to, to under to see in a society now where we depend on big explosions, very masculine energy, very, very brutish, thrusting forward home, uh, you know, invasive type of energies that the evolution into space age uh which there's gonna have to be some kind of great malu or or you know awakening there has to be in order for us to get there but like the future of going into space is not rockets and it's not um it, nah, it's not a story <laughs> it, it's not propulsion based on explosive means like uh yeah. that is not how you safely travel through the cosmos. we're already doing it we're already traveled through the stars as spiritual beings yep um you know what i mean our our our, our, our physical yep. uh, our physical bodies uh, anchored to gaia but we're already doing that yep. um so when you talk about like an evolved species or technologically advanced species under uh, use uh, utilizing their psychic ability in order to create travel or create invention I yeah. completely believe that that is, that makes total sense. Well, and, uh, for those of you who may have had ET encounters, which I believe Steven has, he just doesn't remember them. Um, I think there, I have, yeah. Yeah. There's a component of yourself amongst the, um, people who contact you most frequently, you know, and whether that's like a, an avatar that you can inhabit or like uh like like we said with the jellyfish uh illustration perhaps there's a piece of you that exists as a human and a piece of them that exists as a whatever the fuck they are you know and when you come together it's for a uh forgive the term a real sense of communion that's what coming together should mean yeah absolutely john london was right <laughs> you, see, uh, you see how he took that right out of the gutter you see how i dipped that in the gutter sauce and a mortal just picked it right up he even used a socialist <laughs> well for every base shocker there has to be a crown shocker yeah yeah bro yeah yeah, yeah. but uh I, i'd also like to take a deep dip into the um <laughs> Let's the quote unquote conspiracy realm because you fired off my imagination just then, man. Um, the space program, like NASA and rockets and like all that shit with like fire and explosives, that's all a cover story, dude. Like, we have had technology since at least the 40s that could, at least um, the 40s, right? Yeah, that could, um, but go ahead. But we, but the robber barons and the yeah. big oil companies had already taken control. The Edisons, you know, the Edisons over the Teslas, which is a, which is robbing the entire human race of so many good things. Well, um, those were the hands that it ultimately fell in, and that's why we had so many compartmentalized black budget projects and you know like you can only see this if you have that type of clearance and like you guys can't talk to each other yeah. and if you're working on this thing then you can't even see that thing even though those Bob things are like, there you go intimately yeah. connected and we have that benefit of that i mean you're holding it in your fucking hand if you have a smartphone or if you're using a tablet or if you're whatever those things all were developed from off-world technologies you know those are the things that have been slowly doled out over time now the actual like technology is much more fantastic it's thought activated you you don't like okay here's something cute that i told to a buddy that i work with in aerospace because we manufacture aircraft components right and I'm like, I, I just kind of like, like he was teasing me one day and I was like, you know, what's cute about what we do. And he's like, what? And I'm like, extraterrestrial societies do not construct their uh, craft out of miniature components. They grow it in outer space. And I just fucking walked away. And he's like, well, what do you mean? What do you mean? And I was like, you know, listen to my fucking podcast. I, I don't know what to tell you.
<laughs> I'm not going to explain it to you, you picky no, bitch. And, you and it's, it's one of those things, like, you need to you need to have basic understandings about how fucking shit works. And I said tarot outside of, out of our Earth's atmosphere. Certain organic structures exist inside of uh, ships that make it compatible with thought. And you have to think, if you're psychic and you're telekinetic... Why would you not employ thought-based technologies inside of your craft? You absolutely would. You absolutely would. And that's, that's and, a, I think that's a part of evolution. Absolutely. And if you're driving around planetary-sized craft or planetoid-sized craft, why would you not recreate, like the holodeck, why that would you insane. not recreate? planetary you, conditions for you to are live you in. telling me hold on are you telling me that there are fucking ufos out there that mother planets mother, mother like planet toy size yeah the craft that you see skipping around those are those are tiny little fucking sperms man we're talking about the big dick here <laughs> You get me. <laughs> I get you. I get you. you. You see how Coil brought it down to the gutter for me, and, and it, it translated. Hey, Thank the God. Trans fat. Yes. Sir. Even the, yeah, you took it down. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you have to sometimes. No, no. I figured that they were um, some type. Uh, you know, they're uh, exploratory craft. You know, because I can't just. I can't imagine like a saucer that could fit what six extraterrestrials. Like Max, I can't imagine that being. Well, then again, I'm looking. I'm thinking about distance too, like because you, you di when you when you dealing with gravity type drives and you're dealing those, with like yeah, those those little things they're capable of skipping across you know intra galactic realm, right? But for mm -hmm. uh, for motherships and all that kind of thing, especially the kind that are anchored around our solar system, holding up the fucking frequency. And is it more advantageous? Like, okay, yeah. Is it more ad? Is it more advantageous then to have mothership? Because you're talking about like a, a a planetary body type ship. Then, yeah, like we think about why is they, it more advantageous to do that than colonize? Well, well, let me let me put something in your head, and then I want you to ask that again. Okay, All number right. one. At, at one point in time, they were certain that Saturn had like 21 moons. And then all of a sudden, they discover that Saturn had like 300 moons. Yeah. What do you think those other moons are? Now, ask your question again. Do you, you think that, hold on. Do you think that they're, they're, those are ships? I know they're ships. I've been there, dude. So, I mean, so why, okay, so why is there so many ships around Saturn? What makes Gaia, what makes Sol so important to have that us, kind of traffic? Us. You understand our genome is the construct of at least 22 extraterrestrial civilizations. That makes us genetic royalty. When you don't deal in money, you deal in resources and genetics. Mm-hmm. Now, certain other societies, because they have an investment in our genome, what we do affects them. Not only their reputation, but their own like personal energy and vibration. So assume Earth goes dark and becomes like, you know, an old Star Trek when Earth was like an empire and it was like stupid. All right. Let's say this. Let's say this is true. All right. Let's say this is true. Let's then see. why then why did the double meteor impact happen so twelve thousand years ago twelve twelve and fifteen thousand years ago or was it twelve and fifteen you know what I mean I do uh, okay why okay. would that be allowed to happen so we why talked was... about we talked about Atlantis we talked about Lemuria we talked about right. Ur, uh, Mu okay once upon a time scientists called the conglomerate continent pangea pangea was found and found to be fruitful and found to be of multiple resources so it was colonized by multiple beings very many multiple beings those collisions that you speak of attack 
They were attacks. They were attacks. When you, okay, nuclear weapons or nuclear, if you're George Bush, are (laughs) the most powerful (laughs) weapons that mankind has devised, but they rip holes in space time. That's why UFOs go and shut them down and don't let us play with them. Okay, but when you're waging war on a planetary scale and you have the resources of planetoid size craft, you can hurl heavenly objects. Yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah, gravitational fields right. are not that hard about. to manipulate. So That's exactly where I was going to go with that. Right. Let's say, right. let's say, like you want to take out Atlantis. You just grab something from the uh, asteroid belt and you hurl it at Atlantis and then pow, it's done. But you affect the entire biome and you involve yourself in Earth's karma. Mm. <laughs> it's more complicated mm. than that, isn't it? That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Nice. Thank you, man. Uh, but, yeah. yeah, okay. So, okay. Um, so the restart of civilization. After that, like yeah. involving Anunnaki and so forth. Yeah. Uh, and right, that's so, why is that you piece that together. Go ahead. So, you know, that that's a reconstruct. If the reconstruction of civilization, because you said Anunnaki were uh, relatively new, new, new yeah. players to the game, right? Yeah. So, a couple hundred so, thousand years versus millions and millions of years. Well, yeah, dig it. Um, but I'm talking about in the range of the rebuild of modern cro So yeah. you're looking at your, so you're saying that the double, that the great floods, that the great floods were an attack. Um, then you had the Anunnaki and other civilizations who were still here or still invested in the earth tr- to help rebuild civilization. Now, of course the Anunnaki were, they, they had selfish reasons. Um, but, uh, you know, um, but still, what, how did we get to the point we're at now? If, um, there was so much investment, if there was so much investment before the floods, as opposed to now. Okay. Prior to the floods, it was like a science project and it was kind of like, you take your piece and I'll take my piece and he'll take his piece and they'll take their piece all down the line. Okay. When the modern races came here, they found that there was already a being in existence that had been seated and that being perhaps contained, I don't know, 10 extraterrestrial uh sets of genetics and they were like oh this is kind of interesting but also interesting was like hey there's dinosaurs and there's trees and there's like bacteria and there's like trilobites and there's you know diphtherion and all this kind of stuff so it's like scientifically fascinating well absolutely scientific like i get i get the the fascination by the way uh just do you um do you maintain that dinosaurs existed up until you know, like uh, a few thousand years ago. Like, is that where you're at with no, that? No, 65, okay, okay. 65 million years ago. That was the last fucking great attack. And and okay. you got to understand, like, um, dinosaurs and all those reptiles. Who do you think was responsible for that? The dragons, dude. Yeah, Alpha yeah, yeah. Draconis. Hell. You get it? Yeah. You get it? Um, oh, yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in my blood. It's in my blood. I'm looking at, is. um, well, okay. Okay. Well, I mean, that's, that's a whole other topic. We'll talk about that later. A, it is. Uh, I mean, Mexi- we can go Aztecs, into like Aztecs writing dinosaurs is where I was going with that. Um, oh. but, but when you look at, um, the, uh, okay. I'm going to go with the Anunnaki cause they're the, they're familiar with me and I'm, I feel very, okay. very much part of that clan. Yeah. Um, so Okay, so you had the Great Floods, and then you had uh, people invested, with, like the Anunnaki, in develop in, in the, the curtailment of white gold, like pure gold. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is a spiritual element as well as a galactic. It's a galactic element. Yeah, um, which is why we still revere it to this day. 
Yeah, well, it, because there's truth in it. You know, we were taught this by the ancients. I'm glad that there's yep. a lot of ancient knowledge as the awakening progresses. Well, and who taught the ancients? So, well, going. the people before. Well, yeah. the, 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 the ones that are dead but dreaming. Um, uh. So you, uh, okay, question. So up until, evolution teaches us that up until 100 not even that long. What was it? Uh, 15,000 years ago, there was more than one race of hominid on the earth. Are all of those different races experimentations? All of those uh, offshoots? Not all of them. So, um, Homo erectus, Homo neanderthalus, and then finally, um, Homo sapien. We're all uh, engineered. The what about other guys, well, well, the little guys, they were products of some of them experimentation, some of them evolution. Okay. Well, like, okay. So the hobbits could have been evolution. Uh, could have the been. The hobbit race, so to speak. Okay. But the, there, were, there were main races because we are, um, uh, you know, we are part we know that we're part Neanderthal. We're probably part Devonesian. I would I would argue we're part Homo erectus too. Well, um, and think about this: after the calamity, some of us were kicked out in the wild. Some of us were around. Some of us were kicked out before the calamity. There were opportunities for us to intermix with um, yeah, native well, species whose whose genes would be compatible, and that's why. We see that um, even to this day, there are visitors who seek to fuck with our genes because we're compatible with them as well. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Right. And that's through the genetic manipulation. Yep. Uh, the okay. So, uh, like, I'm just wondering, like, okay, circling back. Um, why are we at where we're at then? Why? Okay, if these are attacks, why? Are, and then there were terrestrials that came for whatever reason, selfish or whatnot, because there was more than one. Uh, why are we at where we're at then? Why? Why have we? What? What the fuck is going on? Why are we? Why are we backwards in our spiritual development at this point? Without did we not have guidance? We had guidance forever, and then all of a sudden we were left our own devices after the floods. Well, hang on. We've always had guidance. We were never without guidance. What? What happened was... Oh, interference, I should say, interference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened was uh, after the last, after the Anunnaki pulled off the Earth, um, the demigods were left to their own devices, and they created language, they created nation, they created religion. You're talking religion. about like Nephilim giants? You're talking about them? Not necessarily them. They were uh, They were a little bit more stupid. Um, what okay. I'm talking about is is the half bloods. Okay. Okay. And the people who eventually came to the thirteen ruling families, dude. That's who I'm talking about. Ah. Uh, are right. they evil or not? They don't think of themselves as evil, but they were holding the low vibration down because they knew that they could siphon off of our uh spiritual potential mm -hmm. you know humanity and i want to say saul terran three humanity because there's multiple human races out amongst the stars <coughs> we are unique because not only of our genetic component but the fact that we can hold spirit that is very very powerful and that's something that can be used to sustain life the spirit, hold on, because I know you've talked about the greys and how they're losing spirit. Uh, well, at least like the, the, the enfleshed ones, not the um, automatons. Right. Uh, but, uh, so it's, uh, to my mind, I would imagine spirit is a, com is a vital component to psychic ability, which is Absolutely. a communication. So if you're saying that humans are uh, important because we hold or vessels of spirit, then we can't be the only ones. No. Okay, because if, if they're if they're using psychic ability in order to create, manifest, uh, grow ships, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, 
they have it too. So what makes a species like ourselves so important? The genetics, man. It's remember, all the genetics. So it all comes yeah, back to that. Remember I said in societies that do not deal in cash money, what they value is experience. They value genetics. And uh, I want to say experience to a degree, but like uh, certain of them don't pay attention to it. So again, like imagine you're a scientist and you come to a planet and you find a diverse biome. You know, there's fish, there's birds, there's trees, there's the water. The water is very important. Um, and then you find this being running around who is, uh, you know, was designed by 10 different star nations before he even got here, you know, and, and you're like, ooh, so you set up a little fucking dome and it's called an Eden. And then you start working and then like other fuckers come in and other fuckers come in and, and you kind of make loose treaties and alliances, but like you have suddenly, you know, 12 other fuckers, like kind of like tinkering around with shit, you know? So you start to bring forth species. You have like species explosions and life explosions throughout like the Cambrian and the Precambrian and the Triassic and the, cretaceous and you know and and it's it's suddenly there's like life forms that were never there instead of like a slow progression from like a nematode through like a mega worm you know it's it's not like pokemon it's like people were down here fucking around okay yeah it, yeah i guess without understanding the players necessarily very well some things seem not to make sense but with a lack of information you things don't so the okay so the 13 families mm -hmm. so you brought up the you brought up the illuminati mm -hmm. um i mean to my mind and as far as the events these families are evil are they all evil evil and as far as selfish you know as far as selfish, yeah. They're very much invested in their own continuation of their own lineage. But it's also, number one, there's a blood quantum that's, like, influencing their physical being. But, like, number two, uh, the ritual and their um, inner society is very much structured around survival. So they see us as natural resources. They see us as a uh, right. on the wheel, like little hamsters on the wheel, that kind right. of thing. But um, they're also that's what makes them weak. They're gonna lose, dude. Um, oh yeah, the awakening is definitely gonna happen. Yeah, lose, yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's already taking place. Every this show is a sign of it. Anybody listening to something like this is a sign of it. We're sick of it. Um, I told you before about like, uh, people who ascended through time and fell back and like looked upon 3d, um, earth is one of those key worlds that, um, things can go right or things can go wrong. And, uh, that's why there's so much attention focused on it. And especially for the awake among us, right? That's what we're here to do. We're here to right. raise the fucking vibration, dude. We're here to raise the vibrations, guys. All right, so put your vibrators on high. Yeah, switch it on. Uh, Give it to me. <laughs> cover it. Wear a condom if you fuck a yeah. succubus. They're fun. Relax your pelvic wall. Do all that yes. thing. <laughs> Bring her Give off. it the long stroke. Let's set Gaia off. <laughs> yeah. I love fucking Gaia. Uh, yeah, you got, and, and make sure to give it. And give it, if, if it's a, whether it's a long or short, make sure your stroke is powerful. All right? <laughs> <laughs> we have to oscillate back and forth. This is how the show works. This you know? is, yeah. We're, there's a lot of this trans fat up here. There's, there's fatties up on there. Yeah, dude. So, I mean, essentially, these guys sequestered knowledge. They sequestered um, yeah. health and vitality. They poisoned so, us. They fed us bullshit. 
They uh, don't eat GMOs. Oh, did you hear about yeah. Putin? Hold on real quick, though. Segway, mm -hmm. just for a second. Putin is, uh, Vladimir Putin might be one of my heroes. I'm just saying. He might be one of my heroes in the world. What because he is, he well, he's, well, he's been fighting, you know, the, um, the, uh, the United Nations of fucking Illuminati forever. Uh, he has outlawed the use, actually criminalized the use of GMO products in pharma. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, if you guys don't know, uh, GMOs remove vital nutrients from foods while claiming it is uh, healthy and for mass production. It is not. The reason that GMOs are put into foods uh, or alter foods is so that those vital nutrients, minerals, uh, and so forth are taken out of them so that you become dumber, that you become an automaton, so that you your body does not have the vital chemicals, nutrients, vit that it, vitamins that it needs in order to connect you health in a healthy way to source, also to regulate your depression, anxieties, um, the, the nap, your body's natural way of working through traumatic experience, working through negative energies. These things are being removed from your foods. Um, so it's totally worth go finding a grocer or finding a farmer that grows natural food, with <laughs> actual food food, um and take supplements because uh this is another attack by the illuminati on we the people on we as humans to keep us from evolving all right you got to remember uh the awakening is happening like like coil said so these demigods are trying mm -hmm. to do everything that they can to to slow they can't stop it but to slow down the growth of we as an enlightened species uh, and part of that is attacks on your body through our food. Look at, listen, mm -hmm. art, art imitates life, guys. Art imitates life. There are people in Hollywood that have been trying to give, send us messages and tell us things through movie, film, TV, books for the longest time. There's a book, I kid you not, just real quick. I'm sorry, Coyle, I'm going on a rant. But there's yeah. a book, I got, I got, I got to remember the name of it. It came out just before the turn of the 1900s. And it was about a wealthy man from New York who had a son, <laughs> who had a son named uh, uh, Biden, not, not, not Hunter, had a son named Hunter, um, who, who ran for the presidency of the United States and had to fight uh, the world leaders, had to fight like the, the, the underground world leaders in order to remain in office. And they eventually got him ousted from office. Uh, literally, like, and this dude's name, I think it was five letters, all right? Like, art imitates life, and people do see the future, and they do manifest these things. When you look at the movie, I'm sorry, I had to bring up the thing about Trump, because that was I just found that out, like, four days ago, and it yeah. freaked me the fuck out. There's oh, so, many sim so many similarities between this book that came out before the last century. <laughs> that, that, was all, that was everything that we just went through. Uh, anyway, uh... But look at movies like Logan, all right? Logan love says it movie. the fuck. I love the movie too, but Logan says it all. How did they get rid of the mutants? How did they get rid of the next stage of evolution? They used GMOs. They used modified foods in order to suppress the mutant gene. The fucking these, jab, dude. Yes, yeah, the jab. The, the, yes, all of these things. All of these things are meant to rob you of the ability to ascend to grasp, be in touch with your higher self. That's why I'm a pure blood bro. And I do yeah. not eat out. I do not eat fast food anywhere near like I used to. It's an emergency yeah. thing for me. And yeah. I try to stay away from any food that has been touched by GMOs because the, like I said, again, this is another attempt to keep you from evolving as a spiritual person, as a being. Um, these, these are attacks that are happening. And, and the thing is, they're going to get more desperate, just like just how, um, and I hate to go. I hate to, I hate to go back to the election of 2016, or you know, those the 2020 all the time. But like, these are great examples. When you have a system that is so used to winning and so used to keeping their own in office or in control, and then 2016 happens and an outsider gets in, whatever you think of him, mm -hmm. Trump was an outsider to that system. Whatever you fucking think of him, whatever your prejudices or whatever you, you know, um, or bias, I should say. Uh, and how did the world freak out? 
from 2016 to 2020, we had some of the craziest batshit media fear soaked bullshit diseases and bullshit vaccine years of our entire lives because the entire system was upset that yep. one important piece outside of their control uh, was outside of their, their system was in control, right? That is how desperate these fucking people are. The Illuminati, the top 13, these the demigods, this is how upset they are. Uh, this is how upset they can get. Look who we have in office in the United States right now, a fucking pedophile moron, a pedophile who's falling apart. There are pictures and evidence out there He's on the internet. Robot. It was on, He's a it was on AI construct. It, it was on Hunter Biden's yeah. laptop, right? Okay. He, that dude was on Epstein's Island raping kids. And here we are. That's what dark web is very important, guys. Go incognito. Check out the dark web. Um, and the, uh, uh, but because of the elude, the, the ability to control illusion that these people have. And not only that, this is actually kind of a magical element, so I, I do understand it. When it comes to darkness, when it comes to uh, mages using illusion, all right? So you, they have such a powerful ability to, uh, to create illusion that there is a fucking, I mean, it could be a clone, like he says, a robot. Uh, definitely a pedo, definitely a freaking dude who's, he's glitching. That's, a, that's not a sane man in office. Um, but they actually created so much strife, confusion, fear, anger, and uh, distraction from between 2016 and 2020 that this is in the White House of the United States, that this was accepted in. This is the power that they have to create illusion. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I'm sorry. I we, no, 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 no. You're, you're all right. Um, I can tie this in. The last time we were unfucked with, we created the United States of America. We created the Declaration of Independence. We created the Constitution of the United States of America. Now, that is a uniquely solved Aaron thing. Yeah. Um, all of those things. Um, that's why I say revolution is my name. Because that is in our... Um, soul makeup if you will mm -hmm. um the feudalistic systems the systems of europe all the divine right to rule all the things that came from sumer and akkad was said to be handed down from heaven to earth and ask yourself who handed that down and for what purpose because all those fuckers were puppets if you look at the history of World War I, World War II, um, everything was open game except for the royals. Like, you could not bomb a royal palace, and the royals would not attack another royal because they needed to preserve their blood. All the way up to, uh, you know, the defeat of Japan, okay? We unleashed atomic fucking doom, and all of a sudden everybody was for like, no oh, reason. shit. Yeah, but like it, it made everybody take a step back. So instead of attacking us uh, militaristically, they attacked us economically. And that's when you saw the ascension of um, the two big R's, which I don't know if it's cool to mention them or not, but I think you guys know who they are. Uh, um, I would just like to say when it comes to World War II, uh, Stalin was about to end the war in two days. Yeah. Yeah, and we had, there was no reason for us to drop that bomb. That was just uh, America waving its dick for no reason and mass murdering people. Pretty much. But like uh, like I said before, every nuclear explosion rips holes in space-time on different dimensions. It's yes, not which just may like physical destruction. Well, okay, so when you're done, actually, I have a question on that that you just reminded me oh, of one from earlier. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, all right. So what about all the nuclear testing that happened during the uh, 50s? They told us to stop, and they shut our shit down. Really? So they made us stop out there glassing Arizona and Nevada and shit? Oh, yeah, dude. Um, okay. Well, so I don't know if you know about this, and anybody listening might have a clue about it, but, like, regularly, UFOs would, like, come and visit nuclear control facilities and shut everything down. Shut them down, yeah, yeah. Or... Yeah. 
they would come over and like fire everything up and like everybody's like oh shit we can't shut it down and then like at the last second shut it down that's a, crazy as a demonstration of power so it's like listen children if you want to play with matches here come the adults and slap right. slap slap don't do that shit so i mean we <laughs> we, we maintain those things as a means of a uh, you know control and illusion but it's you know, and that kind of feeds into the um, nuclear ballistics and rocketry and going to the moon and all that kind of shit. That's that's all smoke and mirrors, man. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. We've, we've possessed the greater technologies, like I said, since since the forties. Are we on Mars? We've been there. We've yeah. been warded off there as well. Other people okay. are there. Yeah. Because previous civilizations have been to Mars. You know, the, yeah. the Lemurians, they had contact with Martians. Matter of fact, or excuse me, matter of fact, the human genome was fine-tuned upon Mars. And uh, our biology, like our, uh, what's the word, circadian rhythm, is better mm-hmm. in tune with Mars than it is with, with our... Yes! Isn't that crazy? <laughs> uh, yeah! Listen... You know, when you really think about, because I don't talk about actually this topic that much either, but the Mars Earth relationship. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the reasons, instinctually, I have nothing to base this on. This is completely theory and, and visualization. The reason, one of the reasons why um, Earth is looked after as much as it is, and when, it, especially with regards to like nuclear weapons, is because of the travesty that happened on Mars. Sure. Uh, being, uh, you know, a, a society which re- began to reach that apex of, of interstellar travel, psychic ability, thought, and those, but then decided to take a different track. They took a very, uh, how do I put this, toxic divine masculinity track and destroyed themselves. Well, and this is why our probes are so simple and they're made to go out and march around at like a snail's pace and make Mars look like a dead fucking thing. It's not a dead rock. It's not. And eventually they're going to find quote unquote evidence of life. And it's either going to be in Mars or it's going to be on one of the moons of Saturn, something like that. Europa. Um, Absolutely. Europa. Yeah. There's beautiful. There's shit going on. Europa as well as like planets like Neptune and, and, Uranus, Uranus. I, I don't know. How really? To politely, yeah, dude. Um, life exists. Okay, we're an oxygen-based life form, so of course, mainstream scientists are looking for other oxygen-based life. But you also have to think the most abundant element is hydrogen. Methane is not that far away. If you think about like exploding stars. Um, so there are life forms based on many different type of gases. And when you're looking at ancient depictions of the Anunnaki, are they not wearing helmets? Ask yourself why. Hmm. Yeah, I was so trying to, okay, I wasn't muted. I thought I was muted. I, you're not. So it's okay. <laughs> uh, here. Um, do I want to go off topic? This is a good topic. Okay, now you know what's fucking. But well, since we're talking about interplanetary bodies, yep. So explain to me why planets like Saturn have natural hexagons on them, and why these are not explored. Why it's not talked about more in media. Well, I already you- told you. How many how many ships are around Saturn, and what the fuck do you think they're doing? So, so are they creating? See the hexagons in Saturn. I think there's one on Neptune. Um, yeah. These the not they're not well from what we understand they're natural forming in in the atmosphere. Yeah. These are yeah. these. Oh, I, no, <laughs> that's why I'm talking to you. This is why I'm talking because you're, you're you're talking about the six pointed star. Yeah. Or was it the hexagon? Yeah, eight eight pointed, six pointed. Six pointed, um, which is basically a pyramid on top of a pyramid. Again, the pyramid shape, which is a natural form. Right? There are straight lines in the universe. Yeah. Um, so you have these pyramidal hexagonic 
forms that are in the atmospheres of different planets in our own solar system. Yep. From what I understand in my research, that has to do with um, uh, connectivity and power between us and source. It's a natural shape. It's a shape of power. Now, are, is that is that terrestrial? Is that extraterrestrial made? Like, because you kind of you laughed at that. They're altering the frequency. Those are they're, frequencies. Okay. They're altering the frequencies. So it's you can say the same thing about like a crop circle shapes on planet Earth. So you notice that when they first started appearing in the 80s and the 90s, they were very simplistic. And the media went out of its way to to make it like some two fucking drunk British men. Yeah, dude, with, with a board and you a know, fucking rope. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like with a deconstructed swing you know just now like granted there were students from shit. granted there were students from like university like mit that went out and did those because they're mathematical uh shapes but they are but they get ever more complex and not only that um scientists in the 90s analyzed the um uh i i don't know the the anatomy of the plants but the place where the nodes like change mm -hmm. have, had been like energetically altered okay so they yeah right, right, they right. were the radiation and, and all in one instant they were made to lay down in a geometric spirals which got more and more complex over time and uh similar processes although adjusted for you know the the composition of of saturn and it's happening on jupiter too like those are the two biggest gas planets surrounding sol okay the same thing happens in sol too it's 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 all an effect of trying to drag this dimension up into the next one and up into the next one and at the same time that's going on here we all are incarnating down here trying to influence time and space and reality media and everything else to let's elevate ourselves let's elevate okay. ourselves everything right. else is bullshit let's fucking it's all a coordinated okay. plan dude so you have gaia which has so many different types of life and intelligent life um humans don't be so <laughs> you know i mean don't don't be so vain you know uh we either have various intelligent lives and various intelligent species on this planet um you have this planet that everyone's fighting for basically the, the consciousness is fighting itself the matrix is fighting to create stabilize amongst various multiverses in this this one place so what happens in places like Saturn, where there is, you know, like where, where there is maybe not so much, nowhere near as many voices, you know, uh, trying to create reality? Is that like an untouched field? Is that like a sandbox, a fresh sandbox to play in when it comes to creating a, a frequency and reality? It's a harmonic so do you play music at all does your yes. sons play music okay yeah, yeah, so so think of it like uh you have like middle c the next c you have the lower c you have the next c the next c the next c um we're all playing a cosmic symphony trying to get like to the next c node so everything in the solar system affects everything else everywhere else and it's been recognized so that's why the focus so coming down here and fine-tuning saturn or jupiter or whatever is is kind of like tuning the strings on your guitar so that everything else kind of falls into rhythm god that makes so much sense i understand exactly what you're saying uh so are they are extraterrestrials doing this they have to be if they're really taking advantage of this but if it's, a you, if you a planet to, go ahead 
if you if you craft if you create a resonance on a um, an overtone resonance on a planet with a lot of life and in order to change the direction of frequency within a system you do it with you use multiple planets alignments you know things like that or you know the hexagons okay then the next step is going to be using spiral arms or sets of systems that are in a cluster there you like, go is this, so is this what's happening like so in a galactic yeah, scale? yeah 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 you're thinking holographically and but you need to think beyond the physical this is spirit working through physicality to improve itself okay now we're right. we're like the mites on the ground like crawling around on the we're like i don't want to say fleas on the body of the dog but like that that might make a little bit more sense to you um we're just like the boots on the ground we got like elements of ourselves that are yeah working on our star working in the gas giants because they're the next biggest thing we got things that are hiding out in the uh, Kuiper belt. We got things that are hiding out in the asteroid belt. We got things that are disguised as, you know, the moons of Saturn or the moons of Uranus. Or Dig it. Whatever. Like, like it's happening on many different levels. But then we also have like the light of other galaxies shining down on us. We have right. like, the very light of source shining down on us man like like no brother i get it you've got me you've got me divorced from gaia right now you i understand <laughs> what you're saying i understand well you're from out there too man i mean i can't tell you where you're from that's for you to fucking know but like uh Naribu, brother yeah there you go so i mean we're just we're here to either fix something that we did wrong or we're here to fix the wrong thing that happened which might as well be the same thing yeah, I um I am heavily reptilian. That's I know that. That's that's where go. I am. That's why I know it. And which is why I battle with which is why I feel so comfortable in the dark the dark forces. But I um but there's something in me that maybe it's the human. I don't know. Maybe you could explain it to me, but it's a, it, it, there's a part of that that fights for the light. The white wolf and the black dragon, bro. You know what I mean? So uh I understand what's right and good, but I'm also very comfortable in the dark and that comes from my uh anunnaki the you know reptilian uh, genetic heritage well i'll tell you this uh as far as it comes to regressive races there's only so far they can evolve they can probably reach the upper echelons of maybe fifth density maybe six if they're you know but but you can't go much past that because service to self limits you to self but service right. to others opens you up to everything else so say you're a reptilian soul now if you're like say you're a warrior draconan okay your lifespan may last five six thousand years right and it's brutal okay right. you're like left alone as an egg you have to like kill your siblings you have to kill everything around you you have to pledge your allegiance to the queen you gotta fucking go out and conquer and just not give a shit you right. gotta take very much like very much like the sith man that's not too far no, off yeah. the point yeah it's not no, I get too that. far off the point but say at some point you develop a little compassion or say you take a side trip at the behest of your um, guidance into mm -hmm. a different type of life form. Um, all of a sudden you have millennia of uh, karmic memory. And I don't want to say karmic in the sense of you have to like sweat it off. I'm saying like in the sense of uh, recalled past life. Okay. You come into a being like the human who the the dragons see the human as their eternal enemy because we both were not created here we were placed here right okay um but we're very different kind of life forms and when we contacted each other the inevitable conclusion was war and war dispersed both of us but mostly humanity um the dragons 
had better technology and they also went and like genetically changed a lot of different other star systems so oh, they, they, well that's why you have a lot of the like the dragon tails they're they're, yeah. they're wise but they're they're frightening they're large and powerful uh they have long lives but they are also greedy you know what i mean like yeah. they're very extremely greedy when it comes to what guys gold <laughs> <laughs> there's a yeah. reason so yeah. i mean you you take a few of those spirits who are in between lives offered the chance or chose the chance i mean both of those are equally applicable to uh grow and change to see it from the other side what are you going to do with all of your instinct even though you're faced with uh human physiology despite however many lifetimes you may have had as a human you still oh. retain that original source uh, right? and that right but and that comes to something else i'm sorry are you finished i had a question go ahead i love this so you, yeah yeah good okay good okay so and that comes to the conflict in someone who recognizes and i don't i know i don't know at all i'm just these are things i'm i've always known but i'm kind of rediscovering in discovery let's put it that way um so you have someone like me who has uh incarnated draconis but is now incarnated human yeah. along with your genetic memory your planetary memory you know the the energy that comes from the planet earth yeah the conflict uh i think that a lot of the conflict comes from those differences uh because incarnation i think it's quite an important piece to who we are and who we become um so what is it that you because you've said you've you, you've come to earth you are you are in car you are enfleshed inside a human being at this yes. moment because you were karmatically bonded to this planet due to being in, an incarnate in another civilization which used experimentation on this world and the karma therefore linked you to understanding the experience of the people that you violated um that's is, one possible path but okay yeah. that's one, okay that's one possible <laughs> right kind of where i'm going with this that's one possible yeah. path so what are the possibilities of paths as to a spirit incarnating from one galactic race into another okay so number one notice that you have limited it to galactic races well, okay. yeah, that's where when my it, mind expanded to so far. Yeah, when it comes to galactic races, the races that contributed to the biodiversity of this planet have a stake in the fate of this planet. So whether this planet goes dark or whether it becomes light affects the rest of the entire fucking... Right, now, do, uh, <laughs> do uh, races like Draconian do they understand that connection too as well like you said they were placed here as well so they were kind of yeah, used yeah. at one point but do they also understand you said like some races can't achieve that higher level higher like 10th dimensional being as they are but, enfleshed i would say no okay but um if you want to work your way back through spirit back to the original intent Remember I said that um, yin and yang exist. So. And karma is a rubber band. Yeah, yeah. Draconis would represent a possible uh, yang. Okay. No, and that's, that's that. God, that makes so much sense. Um, you know, when you were talking about enlightening, uh, like the, the warrior class. Um, Remember, I I told you when we first started going down this road weeks ago that I would have visions, dream walks, where Morning I would boat, speak. To, yeah. Right. What's up, Tina? How you doing, sweetheart? Where I would speak to royal, what, what I perceived in that state as royalty class, who would give me missions and tell me I had I to do this no or be a certain. I have no doubt that you actually did, dude. Um, right. There were there were watcher spirits known as Agigi 
in in the Anunnaki texts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, do you and, know what's? Wow. Uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, you have to remember that um, Aa and Key was a great geneticist, and the thing that right, just like those. The thing that I yeah, the thing that I want to tell you about the Anunnaki, the difference between Enlil and and Key. Um, Anu is both their father, but one had a reptilian mother and one had a human mother. Yes, yes. And just like the uh, stories of the um, the younger gods and elder gods of uh, Greek, uh, Roman, the pantheons, um, there is the story of Enki, his son Marduk, by the way, who was used as, was groomed, I'm sorry, groomed, brought up as a warrior to fight Tiamat, the seven-headed dragon. Mm. There's all, Marduk himself has a dragon form, which is rarely talked about. It's a gold dragon form. Mm. Uh, so there, there is a recognition. This is why I like the Anunnaki, bro. Um, there is a recognition that, yes, they were of the reptilians, but they were also something else. And in the end, they fought against the reptilians and one they drove the reptilians out but it also speaks about using tiamat the blood the body of tiamat to create or help to create us you know our world so yeah. like there's a and you a, notice how a lot of the ancient emperors or whatever would claim dragon blood or serpent blood. yes and there was they, like quetzalcoatl and all that kind of stuff but there was also a very human element that um, would, I would say like was represented by things like the Druids, you know? So, Oh, right. Yeah. The wolf, so, the wolf spirit. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. essentially, and Leal was a serpent and key was the human, but it was reversed in the fucking texts because yes. And Leal wanted to suppress us. He wanted to kill us. He wanted mm -hmm. us to die in the flood all that kind of shit. He wanted us to suffer and perish and fight amongst each other, be negative and all that kind of stuff. AI was always trying to, you know, like whisper through the fucking reeds at us and like mm -hmm. give Fighting Gilgamesh. Yeah. Like, like yeah. Gilgamesh, his, his companion was called Enkidu. He was created uh -huh. by, AI to be his companion to to be his Jiminy Cricket throughout uh -huh. the fucking dark times until he was killed, you know. And then all of a sudden, uh, Gilgamesh became obsessed with immortality because Gilgamesh understood, just like Solomon understood. You know, these were kings of the ancient times that were still connected to these families, these inherent knowledge and understood. They were demigods. Yeah. They were demigods. Yeah. And yeah. Enkidu definitely were demigods, but Enkidu was made of wild man, whereas Gilgamesh was civilized man. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I love this shit. Love you, Coyle. <laughs> um, love it. You understand. Love you too. This brother. is this is, you know, been the basis of my religious faith, my spiritual faith since I was a kid. Oh, well, everything we're talking about right now. Um, and is, yeah, but the, the recognition at that time, and it's not just, uh, although it heavily does lean into draconian versus man or the melding of the two, the fighting, the, the war with the ancient gods. You also have uh, recognition. They're both in our of, genetics. They're both in our genetics, but you also have the recognition of the different states of being through the gates. Um, the, 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 the idea of, of, of facing guardians before like overcoming obstacles yeah. or facing the guardians of the gates in order to reach those higher planes, Absolutely. but not just planes, but planets, Absolutely. um, and stars, there is so much ancient knowledge that is taken for granted that we look at as just metaphor that means what the fuck it means like yes your first impression when you read that line that's what that means you know these are beings who have existed for hundred thousand or however long years these are beings who have had uh lineages who have crafted who have been part of human existence 
Um, and it, it wouldn't, one of the greatest facts of this is to me, um, confirmations, how many different civilizations talk about the great flood because, and, and, and I just figured out tonight, like Coyle just told me tonight. So I did, this is new information for me that these, are, that the floods were actually attacks. Um, but you know, it, it always bothered me. It always like comes to my mind, like, why are the floods where they both, you know, one and two, why are they so predominant in our collective memory? It has to be more than just a fear of annihilation. You know, there's a reason why, uh, you know, we, we think about what's underground, what's in that mountain, what's in that dark place. I don't think it, it's not just, uh, it's not just survival instinct. It is because at one time there were things that came out of the forest, the mountain, the ground that would eat us. Yeah. And yeah, you know, and it's that we're not talking about lions and tigers and bears. Oh, we're talking, talking about, about Nephilim. Talk about Nephilim, talking about draconians, talking about these creatures, these beings from other planes of existence. Um, there is a constant struggle that has always happened, and it's been spiritual and earthly and Terran, I guess you would say, when it comes to our survival and our growth. And so these are uh, these are fascinating pieces of our history that are just not given the time and attention that they deserve. Because this is like, this is more than religion, right? F religion. You're talking about spirituality. You're talking about history, hidden, not, not hidden histories. And, and so this is why, it's, I'm sorry to go off on a tangent, but it's, it's really, it's, why, it's one of the reasons why I like talking to Coyle because he understands. Yeah. He also enlightens me to aspects I'd never thought about. Because as he said before, I am married to Gaia. But it, it's, it is that I have known these truths my entire life and have not been able to speak about them because people look at you like you're crazy. You know, especially in a Judeo-Christian environment, but yeah. these things, the, these things are exist. The, these things have happened. They have an impact. Um, well, that's also why I like to speak about the evolution of the channel. When I first started, I was like bitching about Star Wars, like everybody else. But like, <laughs> what the fuck actually are Star Wars? And I'm going how back do to I, bitching about Star Wars. Yeah. Well, how do I <laughs> integrate myself? how do I integrate what I know into pop culture infused knowledge without becoming like a clip, stupid YouTube channel? Well, no, but you're like I said earlier, man, and you're right. Like as far as the evolution of the channel and what direction you're going in, because like we we're just talking about GMOs and how they're trying to suppress our ability to take in nutrients that allow us to regulate our systems physically, mentally, and spiritually. Uh, and then you look at movies like Logan, where they tell you, they literally tell you, the mutants are human beings, the next stage of evolution. And they are, they were wiped out because they changed the, 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 our food. You know, they suppressed our growth. This is truth. Yeah. This is what's happening right now. It doesn't take, it doesn't take a freaking philosopher. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't take a, a, you know, a university professor to figure this shit out. Well, that's the thing. Like I said, we, we turned a corner recently and, for the first time in a while, we're being left unfucked with to see what we do. Um, you know, ancient past is going to be revealed and we're all going to basically at some point and, and it might take 50 or 100 years, but we're going to be operating from the same basic knowledge source and having been told who we are, how we got here and what we're doing. It's going to be up to us to reconstruct how we fucking live. And all, I'm sorry. Well, all the archaic systems will be thrown off. You know, we won't need oil anymore. We won't need money anymore. It's going to become like kind of like Star Trek, but like better. And I am cool with all of this as long as, if I may, just for a moment, uh, pardon the moonshine. Become. Uh, Captain Kirk. If, no, I said, no, I'm cool with being Captain Kirk. I want to be Captain Kirk. He was an awesome. I don't want to run into a saucer full of little rapey grays. No. Right? That's, that's what that's I death. don't. If somebody, I, listen, if somebody <laughs> comes down and lands and offers to save you, you fucking tell them to fuck the fuck off. Because yes. The, the benevolence don't want your worship. They don't want you to be in awe of their technology Remember, like, even in the best parts of the Bible, Jesus says, why are you so amazed? Yea, are gods. All of these right. works and others 
ye shall also do. Hail Christ. That's what it yeah. means. Yeah, that's what it means. And then like the fact that we were constructing a, a tower of Babel. Oh, now everything that they seek to do, they can do as well as we can. So let's go down there and like fuck with their language and like create nations and disperse them amongst themselves. And, you know. And what wasn't said was uh, the creation of the races. Like, you know, most planets, most societies are homogenous. They don't have the same diversity that we do. So, like, how we have Asians and blacks and whites and Latinos and, you know, Middle Eastern people. And that's not found on many planets. That's also why we're a curiosity. And so, that is why the greys show up and wearing leather straps and chains. Like, yeah, the, like the they, galactic blue they oyster. They want to sample the fucking <laughs> Yeah, you know, like, they come, they come down your chimney, through your window, through a portal, stun you with a freaking phaser, and then grape you. And I don't like it. And I can't wait till we can get to the point where we can just get these greys and get them in galactic jail for all the graping that they have done. I'm sorry. I'm not a gracist. I just don't like graping. All right. No. And, <laughs> and that's the thing is like, they have faced their fate. They are destined for extinction. There's nothing that can be done about that. Um, like that's, I said, they're at the end of their evolutionary. It, well, it was, is it, it's just not just like, let's, let's make a metaphor, man. Just like women in their thirties hit the wall. The grays have hit the wall, dude. They're, they're hit done. the galactic wall. They're and, over. Yeah. Uh, I got, real quick, if you can sum up, because this is a cool topic. Again, why are they in the position that they're in? Why is there only so many of them and they have a limitless AI robots running around graping people? Well, and we talked about this before. There was a Star Trek episode called Up the, uh, Up the Long Ladder, where... Right. They the the starship enterprise encountered a planet. Now I also want to put out the idea that some of these stories were seeded, but they encountered a planet full of people who were perhaps made up of five individuals who just incessantly cloned themselves because they couldn't figure out any other way to perpetuate right. themselves. And when I'm so, the of a Troy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. the Greys after heavy atomic war um found themselves in the same situation they they went underground they had to grow big bug eyes they had to adapt to their scenario but uh they did so through genetic tinkering hold and on bro are you talking about like the time machine morlock human morlock kind of <laughs> comparison that's crazy no it's just, that's what it sounds like i'm sorry go ahead well Okay, that's that's a cute story, but like what happened with Greys were that they relied more on genetic uh, uh, duplication versus sexual reproduction to the point where they found sexual reproduction repugnant. Um, their reproductive organs were atrophied. They relied less and less upon um, physical sustenance as, as far as eating. Gotcha. You know? So when you talk about those things, like, are you saying that they stopped having sex fluid exchange and went to cloning, like, like not cloning, but like uh, conception through like a test tube? Well, and yeah. Think of them as a race of test tube babies. Test tube babies. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But that so, eventually broke them down. And is that, does that yes. energetically have to do with a lack of sacred exchange? between two people in a race or two or three or whatever they are? That's a very insightful question. Actually. Um, yeah, that's a component of it. So the, um, perhaps hundred plus thousand that can currently hold spirit. Um, they're not able to exchange that spirit and oh they don't God. want to, they find it. Like I said, they find it repugnant. Like, you know, like Earth blasts off so much porn, and to yeah. them we look like fucking monkeys. And and I use right. the word fucking like fucking purposely. fucking yeah 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 fucking monkeys. And and like uh, even in like the uh, the Anuma Lish, uh, 
and Lil was annoyed because of the noise that we would make as we were fucking each other. Right. Right. So it's, it's repugnant to, um, those races that are especially not mammalian, but especially not, um, aligned to, um, light purposes. So, I I mean, no, I, I, I understand where you're going with that. The, Okay, so a lack of exchange of sacred energy, which means they've actually yeah. cut themselves. R.R. said off. they became golems. And, they became and that's golems, a very, yeah. That's a very good way to say it. All Thank right. you, R.R. Yeah. Which is kind of why I joke about the whole, the, the grapey thing, because, you know, that's, that's the, you know, I think it's just, it fits what they perfectly. Do. That's what yeah. they do. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm not a gracist. I just don't like grapers. Um, I, uh, uh, hold on. I'm sorry. I got to throw it off. That was funny. Um, <laughs> okay. When you talk about that's okay. Uh, gray society and how they're failing. They're, the culture that must have been created amongst them, the way of thinking, I figured you would lose if you could not, if you were in a situation where you were underground and you were huddled and clannish, uh, you would think that that would bring people together, but instead no. they created a culture that separated themselves from one another more individualistic but at the same time I mean, wouldn't that cause you to lose compassion kindness empathy okay by closing so, off those centers of your psychic uh, of your shop so those are two questions number one yeah. yes it shut all that shit down a- as you alter your genome you change the energetic matrix and then right. yes all those chakras that used to do things are dead but right, your base two, chakra if you're cutting off food and sex then your base chakra is 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 atrophied right yeah right but number okay. two and this is what they are trying to do with us or tried i i should use that in the past tense it didn't work we cast that shit off okay they're they're done they're gone they're dead scoot away bugs raid was sprayed all over those fucking insects okay and what are you talking um, about who the grays okay they're not they're They're not not going to be well if you invite them yeah but like they're not they're not going to be like a geopolitical fucking thing anymore okay but the thing that they were trying to offer us was what was offered to them hey we're an extra planetary fucking society. We can offer you a way out of this shit. All you have to do is fucking bow down and serve us. Right. So you know what happened to the greys? They were further genetically altered. Females were fucking made to breed, uh, uh, hybrids. And those hybrids were installed in other star systems. And you know, you know who bailed them out? Who? You know who bailed them out? The dragons, dude. Their masters. Yeah. And they wish to cast them off as much as we wish at one point to cast them off. But they are karmically bound because they fell into agreement and all this kind of shit. Um, so, so what? Okay. What? I've, I've, I've always maintained kind of like we're... I've always said this too, dude, since I was a kid, we must be in the backyard of some galactic federation in like a nature reserve, you know? Yeah. So who, who's nature, who's quote unquote nature reserve are we in? It's been disputed. Like I said, 22 different races have come down and like, uh, altered our genome. And it, you're talking different- over millions of years, hundreds of millions of years. Okay. If not billions of years. Yeah. So okay. like pre way pre-human. So this is oh, been yeah. happening. Oh okay. yeah. 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 Dude. Um, I would say the first 10 species that came here and kind of like messed around with things were not so against each other because they would come and go. It's like, Oh, here's a nice little planet. Uh, it's not, there's no intelligent life here. Let's just kind of like play with it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah the same time that spirit is tweaking with all this stuff and you have to remember Mm -hmm. spirit is the underlying factor of all this and like i said Mm -hmm. 
the benevolence don't want you to be in awe of them or in awe of their technology. They want you to realize who the fuck you are. Okay. We're but when it came around to the past couple hundred million years, when Pangea was a fucking thing and when the continents slowly started to drift apart, you had different land masses that you knew as Atlantis and Lemuria and Mu and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. That's when all the different biomes were set up. That's when the other 12 races were here. And eventually they reached the discord and they fought with each other with whatever conventional weapons you can dream of. But eventually they hurled planetary land masses at the earth and it sunk continents and it right. separated things and it destroyed uh, life on earth for a little while. And yeah. rose land masses as well. Because you're talking rose about like, masses. yeah, there'll, there'll be the rise and fall of different uh, land masses on the crust. Is uh, it's a, a geo, a geophysical reality? Yep. I think we pretty much understood that now. Yeah. Um, which is why you have Machu Picchu, you mm -hmm. know, um, and why you have sunken pyramids underneath uh, the Cuban Sea. Uh huh. And and temples off the coast of Egypt or Japan. Yep. And right. Uh, alongside people, alongside tr two, also, I would say places like the port of Alexandria or Alexandria, which is underwater because of the, the rise of sea level. So, mm -hmm. to, you know, but um, I'm talking about like major, major sinkings. I'm talking about the continent that existed north of Australia. That is now just like you only see a couple islands because it's all that's left of the tops of those mountains. That was Moo. Moo, right. Um, and Limeria was out, what, east of Asia, right? Yeah. But, and then Atlantis I, was I, in. I posted a map on Instagram, man. Oh, Check cool. All right. All right, I will. Um, so, all right, here we go. If there were. Uh, civilizations that came in and was playing with the earth you know 100 to 100 million years ago um would they be would they have been interested or would they have cultivated something like dinosaurs and would they have reset the planet if they thought that the, the experiment had failed that was reptilian influence yeah absolutely now you also have to realize that in addition to the alpha draconis which they themselves call themselves Sihar. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there are, there is also a native earth dragon and there are native reptilians that, that live underground. Mm -hmm. I know this sounds like fucking weird, dude, but it's, it's the fucking truth. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the alpha draconis, like I said, uh, when you don't deal in cash, genetics are one of the things that are of value so one of mm -hmm. the things the c car like to do is they like to go around and genetically alter everything they fucking find so like i said um whereas in a normal evolutionary process you'd have something like a nematode that turns into a grand worm you have sudden explosions of different reptilian species and not only reptilian species on the terrestrial level, but like you have sea reptilians and you have flying reptilians yeah. and you have, but they're all dumb animals. They're not sentient. Um, genetics. So they, they, were, genetics. they were, they're just playing around with shit, playing with genetics and probably tr trying to perfect some type of genetic tissue or, you well, know, for just, improvement, just having fun, just fucking around. Like, like you can breed Pokemon. So like, how do you, All right. you know, how do you so, do that? Like on a living animal level, do you have any knowledge or information regarding the octopus? Hmm. All right. Cause you're talking about a, uh, animal that, that they cannot tell what its evolutionary track was. It can rewrite its RNA. There is nothing that's related to it. Not even the squid is related to an octopus. So yeah. that well, is an it, alien creature of some type. It was definitely placed here, um, as were the cetaceans. 
The yeah, cetaceans, so, really. Oh yeah, dude. Um, you asked about like a uh, Neptune. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The the, uh, the hexagons. Yeah. <clears throat> so I've always found that interesting. I just um, this. All right. What's in Antarctica, man? Is there is there is there bases down there? Okay, I was waiting for that. I was actually kind you of like, me? yeah, I was back burning that <laughs> when I was talking about Pangea. Because yeah, I felt you it. also you also have to realize, like, okay, you know how we're taught that Earth is tilted on its axis. Mm-hmm. That is the result of planetoid impact. Okay, mm-hmm. so. We're orbiting at a normal fucking velocity. Antarctica is tropical. Right. Yeah, there's, uh, you know, things coming and going. That was definitely one of the Eden biomes. Um, Then they start hurling space rocks at us. And then suddenly we're knocked out of orbit. Half of the planet falls off and becomes something else. And then uh, before you know it we're tilted and then Antarctica becomes frozen over and then we're sent into ice ages and all this kind of shit. Like we're, Mm -hmm. we're wobbling. We're trying to refigure out our, uh, uh, orbital path. And we finally settled into something that's like, okay, but yeah, there's still traces of, uh, things in Antarctica. Yeah. The temples there's, I mean, there's so many stories. The pyramids Absolutely. that are down there. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's it, it. It's one of the great mysteries that I would like to. Ex- I would have loved to have explored. I would like to explore. Well, and Antarctica is the one continent that all the countries agreed not to go and colonize. But we've all sent like expeditions and scientific teams. I think the bases, Nazis. Yeah. yeah, I think the Nazis were the closest. Uh, to actually like figuring something out. But as I heard, they were actually like chased out of there. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause they were <laughs> affiliated with a different off world planet. So like the yeah. grays came down and the Nazis told them to fuck off because they were affiliated with somebody else. And then they get the technology and they start doing stuff and, they go to Antarctica and they're told to fuck off because you're not, you're with those guys. Who do you know if, who is the United States aligned with? Because it seems like all of the moves the United States makes, and I'm, I love my country and all, but it seems like the moves that we make, the infiltrations, the CIA operations, the destabilizations, the proxy wars, seems like I don't know. We might be the bad guys, you know, when it comes to the rest of the world. Well, that's an interesting question because we were the light of the world for a couple hundred right. years. Yeah, we were. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, World War One and the yeah, Federal Reserve and the banker. Yeah, all that. We were the corporation of the United States. Yeah, like everything that Thomas Jefferson warned us about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have Republican black judges in the 1800s. Uh, <laughs> like sure all did. Kinds of shit. You know what I mean? There's all kinds of shit that was really positive that there isn't talked about now, but <laughs> you look at, yeah. excuse me, go ahead. Places like Afghanistan uh, that has been played with, you know, within my lifetime from the eighties until now or until you know recently um where you have societies that were doing well and then these bigger powers came in and started playing games and created the stabilization build up the stabilization that to me is an evil empire that's yeah. that's how evil would act so i mean we got to go back to uh atomic detonations we talked about that a little bit earlier in the show yeah once the u.s started blowing up atomic bombs it really got the attention of off-world entities now we were approached by several human races but ultimately the and not even the government it's not like the senators and the senate and like the president and all this kind of shit right it was like the mj12 they entered into agreement with uh 
the Grays and the Orion Group, and when and they received technologies in exchange for the right to experiment with genetics. Because remember, if you don't deal in cash society, right? What's right. valuable? Resor value? Resources and genes. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. the Grays in particular were dying, like I said. So they start mass abducting people and start trying to figure out a way to bond their genome to ours and then bond spirit to that genome, mm -hmm. which doesn't work. Like most of those, most of those beings don't last much beyond, uh, I would say 50 to 75 years, but it's because they can't foster spirit and they don't, the the genes that they're trying to combine just don't fucking work that's why you see like mothers are taking and then eggs are extracted and then they do something with the egg they implant the fetus they take the fetus and then they bring the mother back and present the baby to the mother to try to like nurture it to try to see if like the soul would bleed into the baby but it doesn't so it just it doesn't fucking work dude so uh Okay, nature abhors a vacuum, though. If you mm -hmm. create through genetics, if you create a clone of some type, or if you create life, something that is thinking energetically, you're telling me that that is not connected to source, and yet spirit is needed in order to energize. You're talking about something that is using AI to artificially create a genome. So, so AI no. does not... Well, it would not contain spirit. So, uh, uh, so a being generated by AI does not contain spirit. Like, actually, that's kind of that makes sense, right? Because we're making AI fucking voices and 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 things right now, like all over the internet, As and then that's not taught. that's not alive. No, but it mimics life. It does, but it can only go so far. So, like, say, Chat GPT becomes sentient. Okay, it only exists within the hardware that it exists within. Um, our hardware is biomechanical and electrochemical, oxygen based, and you got to take in carbon to change carbon around to exhale carbon to shit out carbon, whatever. Um, AI can only exist with a, within the computer. What happens if I smash the computer? It doesn't fucking work. Now the computer can try to Darth Vader us, but like what happened to Darth Vader? <laughs> you know, he died. Right. Yeah. It's a freaking ghost in my kitchen, bro. Is there? I swear to God. I heard it while you were talking. I didn't want to interrupt yeah. you. Well, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Talk? No. Go About ahead. the ghost? Yeah, no, I just saw listen, guys. One thing that I've learned about um the different uh, between your third eye and your physical eyes is allow impressions to happen um allow an impression to happen during an instant during a moment all right what your mind is telling you is not an illusion that is what's going on um and if you approach an area where you have seen something through your third eye uh, and your physical eyes do not give yourself a moment just give it relax let your pineal gland do its work uh, and um, and allow yourself to see it. We condition ourselves, uh, we have been conditioned from our parents on, from the world, to see things a certain way. And everything before you is only a fraction of what is actually happening in your sphere of vision. And that's where I'll stop the rant. <laughs> that's actually a good way to start to see auras too. It is. You can it, you can start with your own hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. When you're and don't do it when you're masturbating, guys, or you're getting yeah. great by a gracist. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, um, you're good. I, up, I, but yeah, the um, yeah, basically, uh, yeah, that was just a segue. That was just a you know, uh, stare, uh, meditate uh, in the sunlight in the dawn, and uh, allow your pineal gland to soften, so you can you know begin to use it. Um, Sounds good. Yeah, man. Uh, what other questions to have? I don't know, bro. 
Well, that's all good. Um, we've been running for about three hours now, so I, I think that's a good time to close down. Um, I'm having like fun, to, though. Yeah, me too. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. Um, we're going to let you know about the plans for next week. Um, I'm going to speak to Steven backstage about um, all that kind of stuff, but um, I'd like to say hail to the chat one last time. Um, whether you're listening live or joining us in a rebroadcast, I'd like to invite you to lift high, whatever it is you are imbibing. Join me in the savage salute. Hell. Here is to us. What is like us? Not a goddamn thing. Wash your hands, wash your ass. There you go, buddy.